a guy in yellow clothes, covering his face from the rain with his palm, rode a scooter through a puddle. 2022 The scooter passed near small shops. There was a slight thud in the store as raindrops fell outside the window. The guy placed a piece on the board with a pleasant thud while playing a board game. The older man's eyes bulged, sweating nervously. The main character said with a smile, check. The man said that he almost won, he just needed 13 moves. The guy told him not to strain himself, calling him an old man. Frowning, the man his lips resentfully, looking at the game board. Among the noise of the rain, his dissatisfied cry could be heard. Turning to the guy, he said that he was already tired of giving him money. He said that he only won 20 yen from Lao Li and Lao Zhan this morning and immediately lost it all to him. The main character said that he wouldn't have to take his money if they wanted to play with him. He added that he gets the money and he maintains his dignity. Closing his eyes, the man said that everything he taught him was complete nonsense. The main character, sitting opposite him, asked with a smile how he won then. The man placed a piece on the playing board. Turning away, he suggested looking again. The main character calmly said, as you wish. He frowned and closed his eyes in concentration. The rain continued to pour down the street. The wind carried tree leaves through the air. The main character sat with his eyes closed, his hands clasped. At some point his eyebrows relaxed. People around began to walk back, leaving behind a yellow trail. The pieces on the board moved, also leaving behind a mark. A smiling elderly woman and a little girl stood next to each other. Rainwater from the ground slowly rose up. The main character found himself in a yellow space, surrounded by film, in front of a huge bookshelf. He took one of the books from which the film came. The main character grabbed his head, and a lot of films flew out of the book. He exhaled slowly, returning to the real world. Making his move, he said that the essence of the thirteen techniques of abandoning the horse lies in the sixth step of entering the chariot, and abandoning the horse, which is a trump card for breaking the line of defense. He said that he saw him playing with that old man in Wanchen Park, and he played quite skillfully. Smirking, the main character said that if you learn thirteen techniques for rejecting a knight this week, then defeating him would not be difficult. The man sharply pointed his hand with the game piece in his face. He asked with a smile if he could defeat him in a week, then when would he be able to defeat him? The main character said that he would not have a chance even in 500 years. The man asked why he left school so early, because today was his self-study day. The main character looked at him silently. He said he was waiting for someone. The man asked why not go to the Zyanki Championship since he was so good at it. He said that he said that he had no money and he just might win a prize there. The main character said that he just memorized a lot of games and strategies, but this does not make him a pro in Zyanki, and a good memory does not give good analytical skills, so he does not see himself as a Zyanki player. The man asked if he was talking about his photographic memory. He said he thought it was just a myth. Three pairs of legs walked on the wet asphalt. The rain stopped and the rays of the sun illuminated the street. Glistening drops of water dripped from the canopy. A small child told his mother, a woman with long black hair, that the rain had stopped. The main character turned sharply in their direction, and the man looked at him. The woman looked back at him, her mouth open. The main character looked at them silently, getting up from his seat. Rainwater flowed into the drain. The main character opened his mouth, remaining silent. He grabbed his trembling hand. The child called out to his mother. They continued to look at each other in silence. Looking to the side with a somewhat sad expression, she said, Sin Cheng. The main character smiled slightly in response. Turning around, he began to leave, looking down wearily. The woman stepped across the puddle towards the store. She asked Jan why Sin Cheng came to play with him in Zyanki again. Jan said that he doesn't know, because this is her son. He said that he has no living expenses, so he can earn himself some money by playing Zyanki. The woman said that she sends money to his father every day. She asked if he shouldn't be self-studying today. Jan said that he said that he was waiting for someone. The woman said she should go and have a look. The man in the black jacket told her that today was Heia Hao's birthday. They had already made a reservation and should take him to the cinema after dinner. Heia Hao grabbed the woman's hand. Wang Fen said, maybe Kin Cheng skipped class, so she has no time for it. The man said that he was already 17, he could already take care of himself, and he had his own father. He said that she could wait until the weekend and meet him then, and now he suggested that she spend time with Heia Hao. Wang Fen her lips tightly. She reluctantly agreed. Sin Cheng inserted the key into the keyhole of the door of his house. The door slammed shut, surrounded by battered walls and boxes. There were empty bottles and beer cans on the table, and the main character began to call someone. While walking around the house, he accidentally pushed an empty can with his foot. Putting the jar on the table, he called his father. His father, without listening to him, told him to ask his mother for money for maintenance, 
because he had no money and she was now rich. The main character replied that he did not need money and he had not asked him for it for a long time. His father asked what he wanted. Sitting at the table where he was playing mahjong, he told him to contact his mother if he was called back to school for a parent-teacher meeting. Kin Cheng hung up the phone silently. He put the phone in his pocket and took a deep breath. The time on the phone was 1801. On the main character's hand was written in holographic numbers, 5 hours, 58 minutes and 12 seconds. Looking at the decreasing countdown, he sighed heavily. Putting on his yellow jacket, he thought that he did not know how this countdown would end. Turning the doorknob, the main character thought that it could be dangerous. Turning around, he thought that this could be another life. He left the house, devoid of life, slamming the door behind him. Kin Cheng decided to go to the market. He passed through a hardware store, a pharmacy and a supermarket. It got dark outside, and the clouds in the sky turned dark blue. Returning home, the main character put a bag full of groceries on the floor. There was a first aid kit and a flashlight on the table. He put something under the pillow on the bed. Sin Cheng finished by saying that when he doesn't know what he will face, all he can do is prepare as much as possible. The bars on the window began to shake violently from a sharp gust of wind. Lightning flashed, illuminating the room with a painfully bright light. The main character, looking at the floor, wondered if he should find help. Clenching his trembling hand into a fist, he thought about who he should ask for help. Pursing his lips, he wondered who he might find. Sin Cheng thought that asking ordinary people for help with such a strange question was useless, and he didn't have much friends at school. Taking the green amulet in his hand, he prayed and bowed. Falling onto the bed, the main character sighed and thought that the preparation was complete. There were two contacts on his phone screen, his mother and Nang Jin Cheng. The awkward face of his mother appeared in the main character's memory. Then he remembered his father gambling. He frowned silently. Kin Cheng thought that the mother had done nothing wrong. He thought about selling his house, domestic violence and derailment. Sitting in the yellow space and watching the film with his memories, he thought that his father had done all this. The main character thought that at that moment there was nothing wrong with his mother's voluntary divorce, and he should be happy for her choice, because it was right. He remembered the woman asking her mother how a woman could start a family with a teenage son as a balance and who would marry her. Walking through the yellow space, he thought that this was why he had decided to live with his father. He thought that he knew that this was also true. Sin Cheng pointed his phone's camera at his hand with a holographic inscription. The holographic inscription was not visible on the camera. Covering his face with his hand, he thought that perhaps this was the last two and a half hours of his life. Lying on the bed, he wondered if his whole life would have such a simple ending. The bicycle wheels were moving quickly on the wet asphalt, splashing water. The main character was driving along the road, thinking that there were indeed a lot of regrets in this life, and there were a lot of things that he didn't dare to do. He thought that today he did not need cowardice and fear, but courage. Sin Cheng turned sharply on the road. He braked with his foot, looking at one of the windows of the multi-story building. He thought that he knew it was here. He called the police. The main character said that he wanted to report the Lunton community, room 201, block 2, building 17, because people gather there to gamble. The policeman replied that they would arrive soon. Kin Cheng silently put the phone in his pocket. He pushed off the ground with his foot and drove off. He drove along the road without shelter from the falling rain. The main character looked to the side with a blank expression on his face. A police car drove past him with its siren on. Kin Cheng continued driving along the road. He returned home, leaving wet footprints on the carpet. He took off his wet yellow jacket. The main character smiled slightly. There were 52 minutes left on the timer. He was packing his things into a backpack. He put the paper and pen on the table. There were 32 minutes left on the timer. With one minute left on the timer, Sin Cheng put the backpack on his back. Ten seconds left. The man was carrying a box into the store. The police escorted people, including the protagonist's father, into the car. Sin Cheng sat silently waiting on his bed. The girl with short hair looked out the window. There were four seconds left, and the main character slowly inhaled. Wang Fen's son painted a smile on the foggy window with a happy smile. One second left. The main character frowned decisively. The timer has reached zero. A blue outline surrounded everything. The time had reached midnight and the analog clock was open on the phone screen. A fly hung in the air above the main character. Surrounded by streams of yellow energy, he tensed his eyebrows. Sin Cheng stomped his foot, and the area around him became filled with cracks. The space around him shattered into fragments, like glass, and the main character opened his mouth in tension. The system said, 10,101. The main character found himself in a dark space full of fragments with reflections of the real world. 
He wondered where he was. Yellow energy flashed in front of him. Sin Cheng opened his eyes in amazement. Shrouded in a blue aura, he fell in space. He crossed his arms and covered his face with them. The main character woke up on a bed in a futuristic room. He opened his mouth in amazement and frowned. Rising up on the bed and looking under her sleeve, she noticed that the knife had disappeared from his hand. On his arm was a holographic countdown to his return. 48 hours. Tin Cheng thought that 48 hours is two days. He looked down at his clothes. Looking at his palm, he thought that he was still in his body. Because, after all, fingerprints and the location of pores could not be faked. He thought that he was in another dimension. And the counter is the time that he is in another space and time. Which means that when the counter runs out, he will return back. The main character thought that although not everyone was waiting for him, he was still glad that he had somewhere to return to. He looked around the room around him. He was in a room with metal walls and a glass door, and a laser lamp was shining on the ceiling. There were shoes, a toothbrush and a mug on the floor. There was a basin for washing on the shelf. Touching the metal wall, Sin Cheng wondered what kind of place this was with such expensive building materials. Hearing the noise, he suddenly tensed up. After putting on his shoes, he picked up his toothbrush from the floor. Hiding behind the wall, he lay in wait. The lock on the door swung open with a click. The door began to open. The main character was blinded by a bright light from behind the open door. Frowning, he looked back. The voice announced the time, 7 o'clock in the morning, breakfast time. He asked all the prisoners to line up and go to the cafeteria. Kin Cheng his lips silently. He left the room into the corridor. On the holographic screen there was a man who looked more like a robot. People with mechanical prosthetics came out of their prison cells. The main character, sweating nervously, walked further down the corridor. The man in the holographic screen asked the prisoners to go to the cafeteria. The voice repeated the same phrase over and over again. A white cat with white fur waved his tail. Sin Cheng encountered an elderly man with a mechanical eye and a scar on his face. The man looked at him with his red eye. The main character looked at his reflection in fear, and the man's eye began to spin. Paying attention to the prosthetic eyes, he wondered if this was a mechanical civilization. The guy, flexing his fists, greeted him. He hit the wall next to his face with his iron hand. Behind the guy there were several people with evil smiles. The guy, laughing evilly, told the main character not to eat too much, otherwise it would be ugly when he stained everything around with his vomit. Sin Cheng silently looked at his metal hand. As they left, the boys talked about how they had heard that 12 newcomers had arrived last night, and today would be fun. Someone said that the new guy doesn't have a single mechanical limb, and he doesn't seem to have any external connections. Frowning, the main character wondered if they knew that he was from another dimension. He thought that this couldn't be true, and they probably meant that it was just his first time here, but talking about fun didn't bode well. There was a cry asking what this place was. The guy, running away on the other side of the room, shouted that he wanted to go home, and he did not want to stay in this place. Stumbling, he said that he was Huan Jixiang, and his father was the chairman of Vin Corporation from Low City, so they better not interfere with him. Sin Cheng thought, isn't this his acquaintance from the foreign language school, who is a grade below him? He thought that it seemed that he was neither the first nor the last here, and perhaps that the place before the intersection was close to the place after the intersection. But he was not sure yet. A drone appeared in the air above the tables. A voice from the drones demanded to stop. The white cat yawned lazily as he lay next to the Zyanki board. Chat glanced at the drones, which were telling the prisoners to stand still. Many large robots were hurrying along the corridor. The main character watched what was happening below. Robots and drones, pointing their lasers at him, surrounded the guy, who pressed his back against the wall. Sin Cheng thought that meeting old acquaintances in a foreign land does give a sense of security, but it depends on the person. He thought that being a fellow countryman does not always help, and sometimes it can become a threat. One of the prisoners said that the newcomer was being cowardly. He asked if he was a fool. Another prisoner said that he heard that he was sentenced to seven years in prison for not paying taxes, and he did not cry when he was brought in yesterday. But now everything has changed. The fat prisoner said that nowadays people who mess with tax collectors are either crazy or very stupid. Placing his hand on the main character's shoulder, he asked with a grin if he was ready. Sin Cheng looked down silently, not paying attention to him. The prisoners came downstairs in one long line. They gradually began to sit down at the tables, next to which there were bookshelves. The main character looked away. At one of the tables sat a man in white clothes, surrounded by two guys in ordinary prison clothes. The tables around him were empty. Kin Chen glanced at the huge steel door. Frowning, he realized something. He wondered why he felt like everyone was avoiding this table. 
Looking at the man with long black hair, he wondered if this could be the case. The man thoughtfully held a piece for Zyanki in his hand. He stroked the white cat's head. The main character looked straight at him, ignoring the disgruntled fat prisoner. The sounds of fighting could be heard at the prisoner's tables. Someone asked if he knew how they deal with those who scream so loudly. There was silence around the man in white, surrounded by empty tables. The main character wondered if this was the warden. He thought that even though he was wearing different clothes, he could still see his number embroidered on the uniform. He thought that this man was also a prisoner, but he was somehow different from the others. A boy with blonde hair standing behind the man, his hands folded behind his back, noticed his gaze. Looking at him with his yellow eyes, he smiled mysteriously. Sin Cheng looked back at him silently. The man on the holographic screen continued to ask the prisoners to go to the cafeteria on a first-come, first-served basis. The prisoners, among whom was the main character, walked down the steps. Someone asked why the line was moving so slowly today. Someone else asked how the collection he was talking about was going. The prisoner said that everything depends on today's newcomers. Sin Cheng thought that there were seven floors, 18 drones near the ceiling, 10 CCTV drones, three weapon drones, and including that, there were 3,102 people. Someone started screaming, demanding to be released. The guy with green hair asked to let him go. The guy with brown hair told the other guy to hold him. He told him to beware of the guard's interference because he must not get hurt here. The guy holding the green-haired guy by the face told him to calm down because he wasn't that stupid. Someone told the main character to look around. An elderly man with a mechanical eye told him that it would soon be his turn. The main character silently and calmly looked at him. He continued to look at him silently, and the man clenched his teeth in displeasure. Sin Cheng walked with a tray of food in his hands. Someone asked if it was edible. The prisoners ate while sitting at tables. The prisoner with red hair gestured something to the other. The other prisoner smiled, flexing his fists. The main character looked at them, narrowing his eyes slightly. The prisoner approached him, stretching his shoulders. Sin Cheng silently lowered his head without looking at him. He suddenly began to run, and three other prisoners ran after him. A guy with a mechanical arm appeared in front of him, raising his arm to strike. The main character dodged, ducking down and not dropping his food. He caught a banana that had fallen from his tray with his teeth. Sin Cheng jumped further, and the guy with the mechanical arm fell to the floor. The guy shouted to grab him before the guards found out. Noticing something, he opened his eyes wide and frowned. He clicked his tongue and stopped the others with his hand. The guy asked with a grin if this boy considered himself the smartest. He said that if he thinks he will protect him, then he thinks too much of himself. The other guy told him to wait and suggested he look at it. Kin Cheng ran further, holding a tray and a banana in his hands. He was approaching a table where a man in white clothes was sitting. A hand quickly appeared in front of him, and he stopped. The guy with white hair told him with a smile that he knew what he was counting on. A man in white clothes sat with a gloomy face, resting his face on his hand. The guy with white hair told the main character that they couldn't help him. One observer said, laughing, that he would have to give up hope for the plan. Another asked who he thought this high-ranking person was. Someone calmly said, former member of Sin. He said he could handle this game. The prisoner's faces contorted in confusion. The guy with white hair frowned at the main character. The man made his move on the board. He said, the bishop retreats from 5 to 7. Let's continue. Turning to him, the guy with white hair grinned and asked, seriously. The main character closed his eyes, immersed in his memory. This position on the board is called capturing the king. Both sides seem to be equal in strength, but in fact, black has only one step left to take to win, and red, if not careful, will immediately lose. He thought that, according to the system, he, as a red player, had to agree to a draw, even if the outcome of the game was obvious, but it was impossible to play a draw. Sin Cheng exhaled and said, pawn from two to three. The man in white silently closed his eyes. He said, the general goes from six to one. The main character answered, the back rook goes to four. The prisoners watched them in shock, and the man said, the elephant from seven goes to nine. Sin Cheng stepped forward and said, rook from one goes to four. The man said, the general goes from four to five. The main character answered, a gun from four to five. The man said, rook from three to five. Darkened, he silently looked at the board in front of him. Sin Cheng, standing in front of him, made his move, the pawn goes from five to one. Looking at him with a calm, cool gaze, he said, check. The man in white looked at him darkly with his red eyes. The playing piece began to fall in the air. The man forcefully made his move. Looking at the main character, he thought that he was young, but he did not have the slightest bit of hesitation while playing. He said that he was a little curious because there weren't many Zyanki players nowadays. He said they will continue tomorrow. 
The crowd exclaimed that this high-ranking person had lost, and this could not happen. The guy with white hair clapped his hand on the main character's shoulder and said that this is amazing, and his name is Lin Ziyuk Sal, and the tall one is called Yi Wang. He said they would see each other tomorrow. Sin Cheng looked after them silently. The green optical interface was watching him. The image of the main character and the interface came closer. The main character turned around sharply. The guy with purple hair fell on the floor and asked him to help him because they were all coming this way. He said that he would do anything for him. Sin Cheng looked at him with a cold and indifferent gaze. The hand grabbed the frightened guy by the head. He said that his uncle was the director of Chanmen Company in City 17. The fat guy said that except for the big five, the rest of the companies were not worth mentioning, let alone this one. Even if his uncle came here, they dragged away the guy, who was shaking his legs and calling for help. The main character thought that, counting this, today there are twelve prisoners, including himself, and nine have already suffered at their hands, and of these twelve, only he and that suffering young man are earthlings. He thought that it seems that there are very few people who ended up here, and even if it is ten million, relative to the total number, those who ended up here are a very small fraction. Closing his eyes, he thought that he didn't know why, but after learning about this prisoner, he didn't feel depressed at all, and on the contrary, he felt a little hope. Sin Cheng thought that he seemed to be superfluous on earth, because for his father he was a burden. His mother had a new family, relatives also came very rarely, and he had already lived alone for two whole years. He thought that, without this countdown, in the future he could, relying on his memory, enter a good university located far from home, and then leave there forever. He thought that, however, such a life again had some meaning. The main character thought that this world was very different, and for him it was like throwing off his shackles. Looking up, he thought that although he had hope, life here was fundamentally different. The guy behind him exclaimed, Finally you have arrived. Looking very closely at his face with his mechanical blue eyes, he said that the rumors were true and he was truly handsome. The main character ran away from him in embarrassment, waving his hand. The guy extended his hand to him and said that his name was Lu Guani, and he came here three months ago. He said that he could call him Lu. After greeting him, Sin Cheng thought that from his words it was clear that he knew him, and he also used a polite address. He thought that the opponents had looked at him 21 times in just over an hour, and these were only those in his field of vision, and these few people near him must be under his command. He wondered if there were any hidden meanings behind the way he addressed him. Folding his arms across his chest, the main character thought that excessive talkativeness would not lead to any good and yet at first it was worth keeping a distance. He said that he did not need his help, and he would handle his own affairs. Lu, scratching his head, said that he should serve him. Sin Cheng said that no one is more noble than others, so he should not use the word serve. Lu said that he meant something else, and even if he disposes of him in the future, he is willing to lick his feet. The main character asked what if he had dermatotic psychosis of the legs. Lu said that in that case he could lick his feet. Sin Cheng, turning away in horror, thought that there was absolutely no hope for this dubious guy. Lu said that this morning he was thinking about why he didn't go look for him in the first place, and if he expected to get closer to Lee Shutton's position with the help of the newcomers, it was very wise. He said that in this prison, if they can get Lee Shutton's support, then their plan will be more successful. The main character thought that the person who played Zayanki must be Lee Shutton. He wondered if he could be more clear about what this plan was. Lu told him to beware of Lee Shutton, because an alliance with such a person seemed to have no chance of success, and it could make them dependent. The main character frowned because he was only thinking about self-preservation. Lu scratched his head and apologized for talking too much. He asked what instructions he had this time. The main character looked thoughtfully to the side, rubbing his chin. He said there was a llama in the south. Lu looked at him in bewilderment. Lee Shutton was sitting at a table in a dark room. There were many flat objects on the shelves. Lin Ziyuk Sao sat with his feet on a chair and twisted a pen in his hand. Smiling, he told his boss that this young man had not helped the other newcomers. Lee Shutton looked at him silently. He said that when playing Zayanki, he is very determined, and even without hands, he is committed to preserving life, not to mention others. Lin Ziyuk Sao said that Zayanki is Zayanki and on the board he can also be decisive. He asked if he would continue to pursue him tomorrow to play Zayanki. Lee Shutton asked who he should play with if not him, because they are bad players. He said that Kai Corporation has reported the capture of Go Hucheng, and the prosecution process has already been completed. Pointing to the portrait of a bald man on the screen, he said that he should be transferred to Prison 18 in the coming days. He told Yi Wang that when he arrived, he would make contact with him. Yi Wang said that he had crossed paths with him before, 
and although this person is difficult to get along with, he can at least communicate. Li Shutton silently closed his eyes. He asked Lin Ziyuk Sao if he had seen the incident with that injured youth today. Lin Ziyuk Sao said that he watched for a very long time and constantly felt something abnormal. He said that at first glance the guy was talking nonsense after a nervous breakdown, but he spoke about the city of Lachin and the Vin Group Corporation very confidently, as if about a real fact. He said that his identity has also been verified. On the outside he is also an ordinary idle person who dropped out of high school and started a mechanical prosthetics business following the Black Tiger in City 18. Rubbing his nose, Lin Ziyuk Sao said that he was suspected of illegally robbing mechanical prosthetics, but no evidence was found, and in the end, using tax evasion, he was sent here. He said that, having found out his entire life history, he had not heard anything about Lachin and the Vin Group Corporation. Lee Shutton told him to keep watching because this young man had other problems. He asked what the situation of the one with whom he played Zayanki was. Lin Ziyuk Sao said that he had not yet found out, and he would be able to give him the answer before the end of the year. Turning around, he thought that the boss was so interested in that guy playing Zayanki. Noticing the main character, he was amazed to think that he was also here. Sin Cheng took one of the tablets from the shelf. An authorization screen appeared on the screen, asking for an IP and password. Lin Ziyuk Sao winked and said that when he first went to prison, he thought that this reader was needed to assign a number to a prisoner. He said that once he logs in, it will display his recent activities, his bookmarks, his reading preferences, font size, and it has built an AI speech that he can call by name and it will help find information for him. The main character pressed the registration button. He asked if he could watch the news here. Lin Ziyuk Sao told him not to even try because his account, like his, does not have enough rights but his boss does. Sin Cheng thought that it seemed like Li Shutton was actually freer than ordinary prisoners in this place. Walking towards the table, he thanked Lin Ziyuk Sao. Passing by the main character sitting at the table, Lin Ziyuk Sao put his hands behind his head and told him to take his time. Suddenly he stopped. He frowned in amazement. Lin Ziyuk Sao turned around abruptly, perplexed. Lines of text quickly flashed in front of the protagonist's palm. Lin Ziyuk Sao told his boss that this guy can't. He said he just wanted to get close and have a chance to get along with him. The main character quickly flipped through the lines of text. The guy, pointing his finger at him, said that he had just noticed that he was looking very absently at the reader. Sin Cheng scrolled through the text very quickly with his hand, without taking his eyes off the screen. Lin Ziyuk Sao said that he just swipes his finger on the screen indiscriminately. Li Shutton told him to mind his own business and not to neglect other people's wishes to preserve their lives. He said that if he and he switched places, he would be even more impatient. He told him to learn to put himself in someone else's shoes. Three hours later, one of the tablets on the shelf glowed green. Li Shutton and his subordinates walked not far from the main character. The main character continued to quickly flip through the lines of text. The white cat walked with them. Li Shutton asked Kin Cheng what was written on the third line of the previous page. The main character answered, When order turns into chaos, chaos must be used to maintain order and preserve the law. Lin Ziyuk Sao opened his mouth in shock. He thought he was just speaking at random. Yi Wang asked the main character for a tablet. The main character told him to return it quickly. After opening the page, Yi Wang found that the words in the text matched what was said. Turning to Li Shutton, he said that everything was correct. Lin Ziyuk Sao exclaimed in amazement. Kin Chen glanced at the cat. The cat looked back at him, her eyes sparkling yellow. Li Shutton smiled mysteriously. He hurried the others to go because they needed to eat. The main character thought that revealing his abilities, although risky, was the best way. He thought that, in the end, if a person wants to survive in this bestial prison, it is necessary to prove to the freest person here that he is useful. Li Shutton was sitting at the table. The tables around him were, as usual, empty. Lin Ziyuk Sao pushed the chair opposite him. Then he took off his shoes. He sat down with his feet on a chair and said that he was back. Yi Wang shouted at him to show respect in front of the boss. Lin Ziyuk Sao said that the boss didn't say anything, so he can also be more lenient. Li Shutton said he seems to have results. Lin Ziyuk Sao smiled widely and said that this Ziyanki player is absolutely pure. Too pure, there are no abnormal clues, but this made him curious. He said that his records show that he is a student at City 18 High School. His parents died in a car accident. He received an inheritance, he has no criminal record, no relatives, and his file says that he stole a phone, which was enough for punishment. 
more than half of the prison's inmates have committed serious crimes, and it usually houses people with criminal records or people caught by tax authorities. He is the only thief, he should never have been in such a place, and his sentence is only six months, which is perhaps the shortest sentence in the history of this prison. Raising his index finger, Lin Zayek Sao asked if he thought this raised more questions. He said he asked something outside. There are contradictions in his case, as they say, he stated that he bought the phone himself, paid the money, only the phone seller does not know why the account was not credited. The cameras suddenly broke down, and it is impossible to justify him, so if the phone seller becomes a witness and refuses his earlier testimony, or a video from surveillance cameras appears from the moment of payment, then he will be released. This is a well-known trick, and in most cases all businessmen who come to prison have this strategy. Frowning nervously, he said his last name. Lee Shutton frowned seriously in response. Lin Zayuk Sao said that his surname is Sin. The surname Sin is very special nowadays. Five big companies monopolized almost every key aspect of the economy. One of these corporations is the Sin Corporation. Moreover, the surname Sin is very rare. If someone meets a person with the surname Sin, he knows in his heart that this person belongs to the Sin Corporation. Lin Zayuk Sao said that Sin Corporation had previously planned to send Lu Guan here, and this kind of thing is easy to track. He said that at that moment he simply did not understand why the corporation sent such a small man, and what they wanted to do. Yi Wang said that he remembers this Lu Guan and he always brought people together. Lin Zayuk Sao pointed his finger at him and said that he was right. He said that this Lu, as soon as he got here, immediately began to suppress the prisoners using his superior mechanical prosthetics, and suddenly within a month, his confrontation with two factions turned into a situation with three strong players. He said that was when he began to wonder if the Sin Corporation really sent him to this prison. Yi Wang said that the corporation knows that the boss is here and they want too much. Lin Zayek Sao said that this is why he still wonders if Sin Corporation has gone crazy, suddenly sending small change to the 18th prison to do something. He said that it was only today that he realized that Lu was looking for a way for this guy named Sin Cheng. He said that no matter what Sin Corporation wants to do, Sin Cheng is in charge, and Lu Guani is nothing more than an errand boy. Rubbing his chin, he asked what they were planning to do here, and if this Sin Cheng was really so valuable to the Sin Corporation, what was he doing here? Li Shutton carefully placed the bowl on the table. He said it might be time to choose the next generation of shadows. Yuan gritted his teeth in amazement and turned around. Lin Zayek Xiao asked in shock if Sin Cheng was one of the candidates, and whether that meant he came here on a mission. Li Shutton frowned and said that such a huge consortium must have both an official face, and a hidden force. The head of the king family is the official, and the shadow is the hidden power. The shadow specializes in dirty work and has great authority. He is the master of the Sin Corporation's underground world, and no one can control him except the head of the family. Each shadow selection process is extremely cruel, like feeding poisonous creatures. Lee Shutton said that it looks like the Sin Corporation is going to disturb everyone's peace again. Yi Wang looked at the guy passing by with a menacing look. The guy began to leave, fearfully covering his face with his hand. Lin Zayek Sao told his boss that even if Sin Cheng is a shadow candidate, there is no need to make his background as clean as if there is not a single connection with Sin Corporation. While petting the cat, Li Shutton said, unless there is a more important secret hidden in Sin Cheng's biography. He said that after what he said, he suddenly felt that he was a little like one person, and they had not seen this person, but sooner or later they would see everything for themselves. He said that he is interested in this Sin Cheng. Li Shutton told Lin Zayek Sao to go and try to find out his details. Lin Zayek Sao asked if he was optimistic about him even though he was a person from the Sin Corporation. Li Shutton said that he just asked him to test it and he didn't want to do anything. Smiling, he asked if it would be interesting to capture someone from the Sin Corporation. Lin Zayek Sao said that he feels that he is different from them. Li Shutton said that every organization has such people. A mountain-taming tiger like Li Shutton. An astute hawk like Sin Cheng, a warlike wolf like Yi Wang, an agile leopard and a loyal dog. Li Shutton said that everyone has their own responsibilities. Lin Zayek Sao asked what his role was in the organization. They answered, a fish shirking from work and a poop that was poked with a stick. Hearing the scream, they turned around. The guy, covered in electricity, fell to the floor. The robot, with its hand covered in electricity, asked them to go to their place according to the location of their camera. The guy exclaimed that he had been there once in the morning and he could remember it. 
The guy, sitting at the table, said with a grin that it was interesting for him to watch the newcomers whom the guard shocked because they did not remember their place. Someone said that the guy who played Zyanki in the morning suddenly remembered his place after the morning chaos. He asked if he was really human. Someone put a hand on the main character's shoulder. Lin Xiao grabbed him by the shoulder and silently led him to the side. Turning to him, he said with a smile that in the future he would not need to stand in the same line with them. After all, he was a person playing Zyanki with the boss, and waiting in line was out of the question. Kin Cheng thought that the security robot was not responding. He thought how special the situation was for these three people. Lin Xiao tapped his finger on someone's steel shoulder. A man with a shaved head and many mechanical implants turned around in anger. Lin Xiao pointed his finger at the main character standing behind him. The man jerked in fear. He politely let them pass, scratching the back of his head and smiling awkwardly. The prisoners looked at what was happening in amazement. They exclaimed about him eating with Lee Shutton. Lin Ziyak Sao winked and told the main character not to be surprised, because the person who plays Zyanki with the boss will definitely receive special treatment. He said that he understands that the food in this prison is not tasty at all, but still he better hurry up. Kin Cheng looked forward with a cold gaze. Lee Shutton ate calmly with his eyes closed. The main character began to eat, frowning nervously. Lu gave a thumbs up. Late evening, 8.40 a.m., the robotic guards were asking the prisoners lined up to return to their cells in order. The main character walked along the corridor on one of the upper floors. Water flowed abundantly from the tap. Kin Cheng washed his face with water. He wondered how it happened that one morning the attitude towards him changed so much. Because Lee Shutton just wanted to play Zyanki with him. And was it because of his authority in this world? The main character looked tiredly at his reflection in the mirror. The drop of water fell from the tap. Water flowed down the sink. A drop of water hit the water surface. Sin Cheng suddenly opened his eyes, finding himself on the floor. Looking at the huge animal skull above the burning fireplace, he wondered where it was. Behind him there was a lot of rubbish on the floor. The main character turned around. There was a broken photo frame on the floor. A bloody knife was stuck into the torn teddy bear. Sin Cheng frowned tensely and opened his mouth. Lightning flashed outside the window, shedding light on the bloody inscription on the wall, Ghost. The main character approached the inscription and saw a toy hanging from above. He thought that his body must still be in the cell. The reflection on the knife showed Sin Cheng sleeping in the bed, and he wondered if this meant he was in a dream. Hearing something, he suddenly opened his eyes wide. He asked, who is there? The voice behind the door said it was the police, police number 27149. He asked if he had called the police and asked them to open the door. The main character touched his face with his hand and thought that this voice was very familiar. He wondered why he couldn't remember and whether he had memory problems. He silently looked at the doorknob. The door swung open with a bang and a man appeared in front of him with a notepad in his hand. Lightning flashed on the street again, illuminating the blonde hair and red eyes of the policeman, who covered his face with his cap. The main character frowned silently, looking at him intently. Blood flows down the steps from the top floor. King Cheng turned around sharply. The policeman, with his hand on his shoulder, asked him to stand still, not move and lock the door. He began to climb the bloody steps. The main character again heard a knock from behind the door. He asked, who is there? The voice behind the door introduced itself as the police, giving the same police number. After asking if he had called the police, he asked to open the door. Sin Cheng thought, isn't the person with this number already upstairs? He wondered who was behind the door then. An ominous voice asked to open the door. The main character thought who it was. A huge mouth behind the main character asked who the real officer was. The mouths asked whether it was the man who went upstairs or the one standing outside. They asked if maybe it was none of them. The huge mouth asked what his choice was. The main character, frowning, was silent for a while. He began to walk through a hall full of rubbish. He reached out to the bloody knife sticking out of the teddy bear. Sin Cheng's hand did not have time to reach the knife, and the knife began to glow with a bright purple light. He thought that someone was stopping him from taking the knife. He thought that it wanted to imprison him here forever. Huge mouths asked why he needed a knife, because he should open the door first. Sin Cheng thought that the meter on his hand was still running. His heart was beating, and his blood was still boiling. Squinting his eyes resolutely, he thought he had no other choice. Stretching out his hand to the glowing knife, the main character shouted, Break! The magical barrier around the knife shattered and he was able to grab the knife in his hand. Holding a knife in his hand, he said that he would open the door as soon as he killed whoever was upstairs. Many holographic windows with a question mark appeared in front of him. Sin Cheng thought that when this barrier was broken, his memory returned. 
he thought that that policeman was Lin Xiaoxiao, and he must now be in a nightmare created by him. Lin Xiaoxiao thought that he was testing this Sin Cheng at the request of the boss, and that is why he created this nightmare. Double Poltergeist Dilemma to test his courage and resilience. He thought that he could not have imagined that this boy would go through all this horror with such calm and confidence. He thought that he was not the least bit afraid, he had the courage to fight against any opposition, and he himself watched it. Lin Xiaoxiao thought that he was so calm and collected even though he was only 17, and he managed to take that knife. Even when he clearly tried to stop him, he even broke the nightmare barrier, all in his territory. The main character, standing with a knife in his hand with an indifferent expression, called out to Lin Xiaoxiao. Lin Xiaoxiao, walking down the steps, scratched his head and said that it was strange. He was able to remain conscious while in this nightmare, and the boss was right about him. He said he was really good at something. Sin Cheng asked why he was doing this, because he did not remember touching them. Lin Xiaoxiao sat on the steps and said that he needed to know what he was like if the boss thought so highly of him. But it seemed that this nightmare had become useless. Sin Cheng, looking around, asked if this was his superpower. Lin Xiaoxiao said yes. He said that, just like his photographic memory, he has his own strength and ability, and there is nothing to hide. The main character thought about a world where mechanics and mysticism coexist. He thought that perhaps the reason for Li Shutton and the other's imprisonment was directly related to the power they possessed. Lin Xiaoxiao asked if he was from Sin Corporation. Sin Cheng thought blankly about the Sin Corporation. He asked whether this attitude towards him was due to suspicions about his personality. He demanded to first explain why the robo guards were ignoring him. Lin Xiaoxiao said that these guards have no right to touch them, but he should not avoid his question. He said that he found a camera recording of him talking to Lu Guani, who was arranged by the Sin Corporation, and now he is willing to give anything to contact him, so he is almost sure that he is from Sin. The main character sat down on a chair and asked, if he is so sure that he is from Sin, what is the point of interrogating him? He thought that, even after confirming his identity, if they wanted to contact him, then he had something else they wanted. Lin Xiaoxiao said that their organization does not deal with a person's past, and as long as he is reliable, he can join. Smiling, he said that, of course, you need to meet the standards. Sin Cheng said that if they have already checked it, then it is already suitable. Rising from the steps, Lin Xiaoxiao said that he personally believed that this was not the case. He said that, to be honest, he thought they wanted completely different things, but the boss said there should be diversity in the group. He said that the shrewd hawk, the mountain-taming tiger, the warlike wolf, all have their uses. Lin Xiaoxiao said that he could already guess his role himself. The main character asked, is the group's donkey. Lin Xiaoxiao sharply slammed his hand on the back of the chair next to his face. He said, leaning towards his face, that Sin sent Lu Guani to come first and prepare everything. And then they sent him here. He asked what he wanted to do, or rather, what he wanted to find. Sin Cheng asked why not ask Lu Guani this question. He thought that he should question Lu Guani as soon as possible to find out what was going on. Lin Xiaoxiao looked at him intently, narrowing his eyes. The main character was surrounded by static and frowned tensely. Lin Xiaoxiao said that it doesn't matter, and if he remains silent, he will deal with it sooner or later. He told him to rest because he had to play Xiangki with the boss in the morning. Water dripped into the sink with water. The main character slowly opened his eyes. Squinting, he silently opened his mouth. The timer on his hand read 20 hours, 59 minutes and 20 seconds. The next day, the prison canteen. Lin Xiaoxiao told his boss that yesterday he tested him with the double poltergeist dilemma. Tapping his finger on the table, he said that he took a knife and went to kill one of those two by hand, and this boy is real evil. Yi Wang said that he should slow down with the double dilemma of the poltergeist, because an ordinary person could not stand it. Lin Xiaoxiao told him not to worry because he didn't overdo it. He said that he managed to get out of his nightmare trap. Li Shutton said that it is very difficult for an ordinary person to escape from his nightmare trap, and he probably has a strong will. Scratching his head, Lin Xiaoxiao told him that he should think twice because this child is pure evil and he is nothing like them. Li Shutton made his move on the Xianqi board. He said that they had already lost a lot of their own, and even they and he were stuck in this prison. He told him that he needed to understand that you can't always conquer darkness with light. Opening his eyes, he said that sometimes you need to resort to fire. The music was loud in the prison. The main character heard music while putting on his shoes while sitting on the bed. 
He wondered why there was a farewell song here, and whether this was the future of the earth. Sin Cheng later entered the prison cafeteria, surrounded by other prisoners. Lin Ziyak Sao looked at him silently. Li Shutton stroked the cat. Lin Ziyak Sao asked the main character if he didn't get enough sleep. The main character thought how he could get enough sleep, because he was trapped in that dream demon for more than two hours. Li Shutton said that most people who escape from the sleep demon's trap feel depressed. But he is special because he not only broke free from Lin Xiaoxiao's control and grabbed the dagger, but also stands confidently today. He said it was amazing. Yi Wang asked if it was possible to gain abilities like his. Li Shutton said with a smile that he still couldn't go his way. He said his path suited him better. The main character opened his tired eyes, thinking about Li Shutton's path. He thought that he was completely unclear about what kind of person he was and what influence he had in this world. And if he asked directly, his identity might be revealed. Sin Cheng asked how he could follow his path. Li Shutton asked him not to misunderstand him, and Yi Wang and Lin Ziyak Xiao were unable to do so because they met him a little late. He said he admired his talents, but that wasn't enough. The main character said he understood. Li Shutton suggested playing Ziyanqi. The main character said that the most important thing in this game is to meet a worthy opponent, and if he wins using his position, then it is pointless. Li Shutton said that he was in a bad mood. He asked if he wanted to rest today. Sin Cheng stood up and said that there was no need for this. He thought that this was the end game of the Imperial Court. The main character said, The Rook on 2 will move horizontally by 5. The Rook on 5 will move by 7. The Cannon on 2 will move horizontally by 8. The Rook on 5 will move horizontally by 6. The Pawn on 4 will move by 1. He declared check. Li Shutton thought that he was using the Rook to draw his general into the game, and the Pawn, having moved a step forward, formed a strong net. He thought that it was truly impossible for an ordinary person to guess such an elegant technique. He raised the playing piece above the board. Smiling, Li Shutton said that he still thought that he needed to rest for a while, but it seemed that he was wrong. Someone exclaimed that he had turned the general upside down again. Someone else exclaimed that he had won again and how was that possible? The protagonist thought, no matter how, if he one day beats a person like Li Shutton, it will cost a lot. Lu said admiringly that he also wanted to learn how to play Ziyanqi. Qin Chen glanced at the scattering crowd. He asked if he could ask one question. Li Shutton asked if this could be considered a reward for his recent victory. He told him to ask his question. The main character asked if he had just played the harmonica. Lin Ziyak Xiao thought that he was thinking about the question to take advantage of the situation, but asked about the song. Li Shutton asked what happened and if this was the first time he had heard of it. He said that this is the music that the founder of their organization composed, and he also wrote the lyrics. The main character wondered if this meant that their founder was from Earth, and, besides, this founder seemed to rather brazenly take credit for other people's achievements. He thought about how long ago Lee Shutton and others founded this organization, and when this migrant ancestor ended up here. Smiling nervously, he said that it was a very beautiful song. He asked if he could sing it to him in its entirety. Eyes widening, Lee Shutton looked back at him. Closing his eyes, he said yes, but the lyrics are not complete, because many years have passed and much has been lost. He began to sing, beyond the long path, along the old road, green grass connected with the sky. Under the light night breeze, the willows swayed and the melancholic melody of an old flute sounded. The setting sun illuminated the fields behind the mountain, at the edge of heaven, at the edge of the earth, parting with many troubles. Lee Shutton said that the last line was added by later generations, and it is said that it was not originally in the song. He said that as close as the line was, it felt like it was missing a little bit of meaning. The main character suggested replacing this line. The best friends went to different sides. The silhouette of a man on a rock hit by sea waves against the backdrop of the sunset appeared in Lee Shutton's head. With his eyes wide open, he repeated the line he had spoken. Smiling, he thanked him and said that it seemed like that was the original intention of the song. He said that their founder was rumored to have created many lyrics and songs, all of which are classics passed down from generation to generation. But they were lost at the end of the previous era, with only two songs remaining. The main character asked what the second song was called. Lee Shutton said, Canon. He said that only the name was known from this song, and the predecessors carefully searched the ruins, but still could not find the notes. Sin Cheng thought that it seemed like their founder really came from another world. If that was the case, then the canon that Li Shutton was talking about should be Pashelbel's canon in D major. He thought that, judging by his respect for the founder, it might be worth giving him a canon in exchange for his unusual path. 
he decided to wait, because this issue needed to be thought through more. Sin Cheng, resting his face on his hand, said that there was no need to be so careful. The prisoners went about their business around the main character sitting at the table alone. He said that Lee Shutton already knows about their relationship, and he doesn't seem to mind at all. He added that now he wants to rest, and it is better for him to take a walk first and not disturb him. Lu scratched his head and said that he spent half a day thinking about what to call him. But in the end, boss is very easy to pronounce. He said that he must have heard Kinning mention him, and he has been suffering since childhood. His father sold his kidneys to wealthy people, replacing them with a pair of bionic ones. He talked a lot about the fact that for his sake he would go through fire and water, even if he had to die, and said that before his death he had one regret, because he did not go to school. But since childhood he envied literate people. The main character irritably asked what he was getting at. Lu asked if he could teach him how to play Zayanki. Kin Cheng asked why he wanted this. Lu said it was very cool. He asked if it was cool that even people like Li Shutton couldn't compare to him. Sighing, the main character asked if it was possible to earn a reputation by playing a couple of games in Zayanki. Lu said that, of course, it is impossible to defeat him in a fight, so winning Zayanki is the best option. He said that it never even occurred to him that the boss would come here and not only immediately get to know Lee Shutton, but would also be able to get along well with him, and given his status in prison no. 18. He might know where the Eastern Tibet they are looking for. He added that if he received his inheritance, the struggle for the position of shadow would immediately cease. Sin Cheng thought, it seems that Lee Shutton's combat power is very high, and from the very beginning, he came to the prison with the goal of finding something. Agreeing, he said that he would teach him how to play Zayanki, but right now he would leave him far away for a long time. Lu obeyed. There are five minutes left on the countdown. The main character scratched words on the bed with a sharpened toothbrush. Pinching his hand, he thought that these two days were like a song, and he met several people and learned about another world. He thought that he didn't know if he could come back yet. Sin Cheng sat on the bed as the countdown approached zero. With two seconds left, he sighed slowly. The countdown reached zero and the world around him shattered into pieces like glass. The main character again found himself in his room with a backpack on his back. He had a knife in his hand, and on his hand was a countdown showing 48 hours. He extended his hand to the phone. The clock showed 01, and Sin Cheng thought that it was still the same day when he moved. He thought that two days had passed in that world, but only a second on Earth. He wondered if it would only be a second there too before he came back again. This must be the rule of all world travelers. The main character thought that this was good, because he would not have to explain why he goes missing so often. There was still a bruise on his arm. He looked at the countdown on his hand. His phone rang and he picked it up. The policeman, introducing himself, said that his father was detained for organizing and participating in gambling. He asked to come to them. Kin Cheng asked why. The policeman said that, based on the law on penalties for violating public order, he was obliged to detain him, and he must pay a fine. He asked to come to complete the formalities. The main character apologized and said that he would not come. He asked to be punished with all severity. He said that according to the law on penalties for disturbing public order, aggravating circumstances add another 10 to 15 days on top of the period, and a fine of 500 to 3,000 yuan is imposed. He asked for the highest punishment. Sin Cheng said that he was the one who reported this incident, and he is not his son, but a caring citizen of Sim. He hung up. He put the kitchen knife on the table. The main character took a deep breath. He tiredly lay down on the bed, placing his arms at his sides. He glanced at his phone screen. Looking down, Sin Cheng thought that he did not have any messages from his mother. He continued to silently look at the ceiling. He thought it would be great if he could return to that world early. It was daylight and there was a clear blue sky above the multi-story buildings. The main character thought that the notes of the cannon were written down, and if he gave the notes to Lee Shutton, he would have to explain where he got them from, and this was risky. He thought that before giving him the sheet music, he should find out whether Lee Shutton had such value. A guy with a backpack walked through the classroom, crouching down, calling out to Nang Jenchen. The protagonist asked if the teacher who saw him running away from class said anything. Nang Jenchen looked at him blankly. Sin Cheng asked if he was okay because he seemed worried. Nang Jenchen said that he is not worried. The main character began to quickly flip through the pages of the book. Nang Jenchen sat next to him with his head bowed down. Turning to him, he asked if he encountered something particularly strange. What would he do? The main character suddenly stopped turning the pages. He asked what he was talking about. Nang Jenchen said that he doesn't know what it is, but it is something special. 
Kin Cheng suggested calling the police. Bang Zhengchen asked if he had any police acquaintances. The main character said that his father was arrested just last night for organizing gambling. His father sneezed while sitting in the interrogation room. Sin Cheng wondered if the oddity that Nang Zhengchen mentioned was also a countdown timer on his hand. He thought that it was not visible to others. Someone shouted to look at the popular queries. The guy with the glasses said that the American basketball superstar Jacob launched a press conference, and he said that he was in the world of mechanical civilization. The main character thought that he did not expect that there were also people abroad who had experienced the countdown and movement between worlds. A black guy threw a ball into a basket on a basketball court. Instead of a hand, he had a steel mechanical prosthesis. Mang Zhengchen said that he had 10 hits out of 10, and he was still so relaxed. He asked if these were special effects or advertising with excellent results. Jacob said that last night he accidentally found a countdown on his arm. He said that when it ended, he really went to a strange world of mechanical civilization. So there is also an Earth, a Sun, a Moon, but it seems to be a parallel universe, and the process of civilization is very different from their world. Raising his hand, he said that he had this hand after traveling to another world. It seems that there he replaced some person, becoming a new himself. Jacob said that he does not know what the principle of the hand is, but its strength is far beyond his imagination and it is also very flexible and accurate, and he can hit it from here at least 10 or 100 times in a row. He said that he did not hold this press conference to brag, because that world is not as beautiful as one can imagine. On the contrary, it is extremely dangerous. He said that he is holding a new press conference here so that he will not be secretly captured for research, and he hereby declares that he refuses to be the subject of research. The main character thought that Jacob is a public figure, so he cannot hide the fact that he has mechanical limbs. He thought that he understood that the technology of another world was much superior to that of Earth. So in order to avoid testing and not become a lab rat, he chose a more radical method. He thought that this was hardly an easy way, but it could be compared with the other party, and he hesitated, so he made this decision in a hurry. Looking at the shocked Nang Zhengchen, he thought that he did not know where Jacob appeared when moving. He wondered if it happened on the other side of the ocean. Sin Cheng thought that he could not carry either the knife or the toothbrush. He thought that this meant that the only way to bring things from there was to transform himself or hide them in his body. On the phone screen there were news about people who had been in a parallel world, some of whom owned prosthetics similar to Jacob's. Nang Zhengchen said thoughtfully about the supernatural mechanical civilization. He asked about how traveling through worlds makes it possible to surpass ordinary people. The guy with glasses exclaimed that there seemed to be quite a few world travelers. He asked if they could be at their school. The girl said maybe someone will come to school with mechanical limbs. The guy with black hair said that he also wants to go there. The main character asked if this was what he was talking about. Nang Zhengchen told him that he couldn't tell him yet. Smiling, he said that if he found himself in such a situation, he would definitely not forget about him. Sin Cheng told him not to forget about his friend when he gets rich. He thought that he had just been anxious, and now he was thinking about becoming the main hero of the world. Sighing, he mentally told him to just be happy. Bang Zhengchen asked if he moved there if he could bring some high-tech products and sell them. The main character said that, most likely, he would not succeed. Bang Zhengchen said that he saw people who brought mechanical prosthetics or something like that. He told him not to worry because when he gets rich, he will definitely treat him to a fancy dinner. Sin Cheng said that many travelers face dangers, so he had better be careful and not think about how to get rich all the time. Nang Zhengchen thought about it. He asked where they would go to eat when the time came. One of the guys in the class asked what the law is for the intersection of worlds. He asked why they still couldn't, since so many people had already crossed the border. Nang Zhengchen suggested that only truly talented people could do this. The main character opened the video on his phone and thought that now he could summarize some points. Firstly, for all travelers, the countdown to crossing this world is 6 hours, the countdown to returning is 48 hours. In other words, the time is the same for all travelers. In addition, there were people who, upon seeing the topic about travelers, stated that they had not crossed the world, but found a 48-hour countdown on their hand. This must be the second group. Secondly, all travelers are young people between 10 and 35 years old. Bang Zhengchen said that now you can become popular by posing as a world traveler. Looking at the phone screen, he said that this guy's plastic hand was very bad and could not be mistaken for a mechanical one. The protagonist thought that at midnight yesterday, Nang Zhengchen was not in that second group. 
Otherwise, he would not have been so shocked because of Jacob's press conference. There was a video on the phone screen. A world traveler was found on the streets of Los Angeles. Kin Cheng thought that there were two options now. One option is that the number of travelers is fixed, and if one dies, new ones will enter. Another possibility is that the number of travelers is constantly growing, and then there will be even more of them. Looking at the video on his screen, Nang Zhengchen said that it was very cool. He said that it would be great if their school had such a world traveler so that they could ask him about this world. The main character thought about the son of the chairman of Huan Jixang Corporation. He went out into the corridor and thought that he was in the seventh group of the first grade of high school. Sin Cheng walked along the noisy school corridor. He doesn't know when it started, but he feels that he is different from other people. He should be one of them, study hard and get into a good university. However, now it seems to him that his path is no longer here. The main character asked the schoolgirl if Huan Jixang was in class today. She said she didn't see him. He asked the guy with glasses if he knew where he lived because he accidentally borrowed something from him and wanted to return it. The guy said that he lives in Yingzheng Central Garden, but he doesn't know where exactly. After thanking him, Sin Cheng thought that perhaps he could not help but come. He thought that his psyche was probably traumatized, and perhaps he had gone crazy. The teacher was teaching a math lesson, pointing at the board with a ruler. Two girls were whispering about something while sitting at a desk in front of the main character. Teacher Tiang Heilong said that it seems like he needs to get a robotic arm or something similar so that they can listen to his lectures. He said that their lesson was over for today. Bang Zhengchen said that he's Ayak Sao laid out the strategy. He said that he is a master of games and can be considered a high-level player. He released a game strategy video a few hours ago, but he has never heard of anything like this, and he is still practicing this strategy. He said that now that there was a lot of discussion, Everyone suddenly realized that the game strategy he gave could be related to that world. The phone screen says, because this game is quite unusual, I can no longer show you a video of it. The voice in the video said that he refers to the world they are in now as the outside world. He calls the world of this game internal. He himself entered this game recently, so the information is very limited, and at the moment, no way to obtain the hidden orange martial arts has been discovered. Currently, three development paths are known. The first is to use technology to transform yourself, which can be purchased at the hospital. The price of mechanical limbs is very high, and he hasn't found a bug with a lot of money yet, so he can't try it out yet. Selling your organs is the easiest way to get money here, but he does not recommend this method. The second way is to join the Forbidden Inquisition and become a new person after the injection. However, he had not yet found NPCs associated with this organization. It must be private. The third path is in prison number 18. After entering, you need to look for an NPC named Lee Shutton. This is now the career path with the highest known potential. The main character looked at the phone screen in amazement. He thought that the other world was a game, and Lee Shutton was an NPC through whom he could advance his career. He wondered when he returned, if it was possible that the people who ended up in Prison 18 would run to Lee Shutton for career advancement. Sin Cheng thought that his reputation in the inner world was really high. After all, He's Ayak Sao had been there for 48 hours and had heard about him. Nang Zhengchen said that to buy mechanical money, you need money, the Forbidden Inquisition cannot be found, and you can go to Prison 18, but it also doesn't say how to get there. The topic of worlds crossing has been very popular in the classroom for a long time. Until in the afternoon, news suddenly appeared, like a dark cloud that covered everyone's enthusiasm. A young man identified as a world traveler was found dead at home. The video shows that the mechanical prosthetic legs he was wearing had disappeared. Many travelers who impulsively revealed their identities due to the popularity of the topic became afraid. Some of the people who returned with mechanical limbs were also afraid of being killed. The media received the news and some people speculated. Perhaps by killing a world traveler, you can replace him and go to another world. Nang Zhengchen looked at his phone screen in horror. The main character asked if he also saw this news. He said that if he too crossed the worlds, he should be careful and not say anything stupid when he returned. Bang Zhengchen said that he finally had the opportunity to change his fate, but suddenly everything turned into a horror story. He asked why they did this. The main character said that while other people's fathers were sacrificing their lives, his father was playing cards. Nang Zhengchen asked about his father. Kin Cheng said that his father sacrificed his life by playing cards. Nang Zhengchen was petrified in shock. He asked how his father was arrested. The main character said that he reported him, and he hopes that he can think it over there. Nang Zhengchen happily asked if he could inform on his father as well. The main character looked at him in bewilderment. 
The bell rang for class. The teacher asked to go to the map on the second page. Sin Cheng looked at the phone under his desk. On one of the falling autumn leaves it was written. The girl who found out that she had become a migrant was having an interview. The main character frowned and thought that this was too much information. He imagined himself sitting in a pile of autumn leaves. He thought that the travelers found today seemed to be distributed in points, concentrated in more than 10 cities. Sin Cheng thought that, in addition, the distribution of travelers might be very concentrated. 1740 Break The main character was running down the corridor. Nang Zhengchen said upset that he skipped class again. Sin Cheng deftly jumped over the brick school fence. Returning home, he changed out of his school uniform. Putting on a black baseball cap, he walked out of the house, looking at his phone. He thought that he wanted to see what happened to Hu and Jixang's inner world after returning, although he doesn't know where exactly he lives. The main character thought that without hardening nothing would come of it, and to survive in such a dangerous world it was necessary to have a strong body and a persistent spirit. He decided to run and thought that something had changed. The shackles that family and entourage have placed on Sin Cheng are slowly falling away. A crescent moon shone in the night sky over Yingzheng Central Park. The main character thought that this was worthy of an elite residential complex, because to enter and exit you need to swipe a card. He wondered if he needed a card to enter through the back door. Approaching the back entrance, he found a crowd of people. Someone spoke in fear about prison and mechanisms. Huan Jixang, who was held by two men in formal suits, spoke fearfully about the monster. People took him into a black car. The main character watched this, standing behind a tree. A dark silhouette sitting in the car turned in his direction. Sin Cheng was already looking at his phone at this moment. The cars quickly drove away, leaving him alone on the sidewalk. The main character wondered who these people were and why they took Hu and Jixang. He wondered if it was because he was a world traveler. He thought that this was in no way a coincidence. Sin Cheng walked down the street where passers-by were noisy. The guy, shrouded in an ominous aura, followed him. The main character, widening his eyes in shock, thought that someone was chasing him. He thought that since he turned around and went home, he had been following him for five blocks, and this man had been vigilant from the very beginning. Kin Cheng stopped abruptly, pretending that he was talking on the phone. He said that he would be back a little late. The pursuer walked past him, and the protagonist lowered the visor of his cap. Turning around, he walked in the other direction. The traffic light at the pedestrian crossing was red. Sin Cheng stood at the crosswalk among other people. Looking at the guy next to him, he thought that this was the man he had seen at the main entrance of the apartment complex, and this was not a coincidence, but cross-surveillance. Frowning, he wondered what kind of organization this was. The main character thought that this organization was so well-trained and so concerned with issues related to world travelers. He thought that he was not from the first batch of travelers, most likely from the second or even the third, and even if someone found out about the travelers today, he would not be able to react quickly and these people were well prepared. With his eyes wide open and his lips, Sin Cheng thought that there was no way he could be mistaken. The traffic light turned green. People began to cross the road, and the main character thought, right now. Turning around, he walked in the opposite direction. The pursuer said the subject did not cross the road and turned around. He asked someone if he was there. His interlocutor replied that he would only be there in two minutes. The pursuer turned around sharply, finding that Sin Cheng had disappeared from sight. He said that he had missed him. The guy running said that it was a shame, because the two of them were following one person and suddenly lost sight of him. He asked if he thought he realized they were following him. His interlocutor replied that he was confident that he had discovered the surveillance, and he was a master. The guy said that he looked 17 minus 18 years old, perhaps a schoolboy, and if he discovered their surveillance, then his abilities are extremely high. He added that he acted very naturally, and when he first stopped to call, he thought that he had still gone unnoticed. He said that, in addition, he then directly followed him. The man, exhaling, asked why he had suddenly decided to pursue him. He said that they had a lot of work to do today and there was no need to waste time on passers-by. The guy replied that this was not a sudden intention. He said that as the squad was escorting out subject number 9, he noticed that it was avoiding the captain's gaze. Sin Cheng, sitting down on a bench, thought that he would sit for half an hour to make sure there was no surveillance, and then go home. Looking at the phone screen, he saw that his IXL was offline now, and wondered if this streamer was also captured by an organization, and how many such mysterious organizations existed in the country. A police car passed in front of him with its siren on. 
an elderly man, adjusting his glasses, asked what was the matter. An elderly woman asked if a man lived here who abused his wife. She said that the woman from this house had already been hospitalized, but the man did not stop. She wanted to get a divorce, but he beat her again, and he also said that if she filed for divorce, he would kill her entire family. The man asked what happened today and if he beat his wife again. He asked about something that seemed to have happened to the man. The woman said he was right. She said that this time the wife beat her husband. She said that he had too much alcohol, returned home in the evening and wanted to beat her again. But it turned out that his wife also seemed to be traveling between worlds. The woman said she was beaten at first and did not dare to resist, but before losing consciousness, she broke his arm with one blow. She said that she was sorry that the little girl and their family had to see all this, because she was too young for this. A little girl was sitting in an alley on the ground. The main character approached her and she raised her head. The girl looked at him with tear-stained eyes. The main character, stroking the crying girl on the head, thought that he didn't know how many times in two years he had seen these mother and daughter sitting downstairs, hugging and crying. This girl's name is Lee tong -yung, and when her parents fight, she comes to hide at his house. Sin Cheng thought that he remembered the first time he made her soy sauce fried rice. He thought that as soon as this man saw his wife talking to others, he would immediately beat her at home, but now he got what he deserved. Lee tong -yung said that her mother told her to go and stay with him for a while. She said she knocked on the door but he wasn't home. Smiling, the main character asked if she had eaten. He said that if not, he would make fried rice. Noticing something, he opened his mouth in amazement. Upon entering the house, Sin Cheng locked the door behind him. He closed the curtains on the windows. Lee Tong Young asked what happened. Smiling, the main character said that nothing special had happened. He asked her to be quiet. Police cars quickly drove along the street. Squinting, Sin Cheng looked out the window, pulling back the curtain slightly. Someone got out of the car, loudly stamping their foot. Two guys in glasses and dark suits got out of the car, and the main character thought that these were the people in SUVs whom he had seen in Central Park, and they arrived very quickly. The guy with brown hair noticed something and looked up. He looked at the window with the curtains closed. The guy with black hair asked him what happened. The guy with brown hair, adjusting his glasses, said that he was just looking around, and he had the feeling that someone was watching him. He assumed that he was just nervous and suggested we get started. The main character thought that if Lee's mother if Tong Young is taken away, the situation will be difficult. Rubbing his chin, he thought about what he could do if his father was beaten and lying in the hospital, and a mysterious organization took his mother. He decided that he had no choice and would have to improvise. Lee Tong Young looked at the main character in confusion. Sin Cheng pressed his ear to the door, listening. He thought that there was no movement, and if someone was really being taken away, sounds of resistance would be heard. The guys from the organization left the building, and he wondered what had changed. He wondered if they had returned empty-handed, and if they were gathering up all the travelers. Looking out the window, he heard a knock on his door. Opening the door, the main character saw a man with steel hands. A woman with brown hair with abrasions on her face, straightening her hair, apologized to him for bothering him again. Sin Cheng noticed the woman's steel hands. He smiled and said that he wanted to cook something for Lee Tong Young, and she doesn't bother him at all. The woman thanked him. She called her daughter home and asked her to be obedient and not cause more problems. Lee Tong Young turned away with a frown and said that she was still hungry and she had trashed the house and there was nothing to eat. The main character invited them to eat together at his place. The woman thought that although he had helped her before, he had never taken such initiative. She wondered what happened today. Sin Cheng said with a smile that he was very interested in world travelers, so he wanted to ask something. He asked how to address her. The woman said her name was Zion Zhu. The main character said that he wanted to ask about the inner world. He asked if she was comfortable talking about it. Li Tongyong pulled Zion Zhu for the metal hand. Zion Zhu smiled awkwardly and apologized for disturbing her. She said there was nothing awkward about the conversation and he could ask her any time. The main character with a sad face thought whether such a weak person could survive in such a cruel inner world. After some time, there were several delicious dishes on the table. Li Tongyang served her mother some food from her plate. Sin Cheng, continuing to eat, looked at them silently. He said that the police are here to deal with this matter. He asked what they were saying. Zion Zhu said her neighbors helped her explain the situation, and initially they wanted to take her away. But they took into account the fact that she has a daughter, and even if they took her away, they would declare her innocent. The main character said that he saw that two more people came later. He asked what they wanted. Zion Zhu said she also didn't understand why they were coming, and they asked her to fill out one form, then took two photos of her ID and left. 
She added that they said they could look for her later and ordered her not to leave the city anytime soon, but did not say why they might be looking for her. She said that she did not see what documents they presented to the police, but they were immediately brought up to date. Sin Cheng thought that it seemed like they weren't catching all the travelers, and besides, they had official documents, so it wasn't that crazy. He asked her, paying attention to her hands, what her role was in the inner world. Zion Zhu said that she opened a mechanical hospital in City 18, actually installed mechanical prosthetics for other people. But she didn't know anything when she got there, and when some person came to install a prosthesis, she could only say that there was no prosthesis in hospital. She said that these hands appeared as soon as she entered the other world, and when she returned, they did not disappear. Sin Cheng said that one traveler talked about the 18th prison. He asked where it was. Zion Zhu said that it is located on the outskirts of City 18, and is quite famous, and it seems to be a place designed to hold criminals. She said that this was the highest level prison in the Federation. Drawing attention to the word Federation, the main character asked what else she knew. Shaking his head, Zion Zhu said she was there for two days and didn't find out anything. Li Tongyang asked what the name of her hospital was. Zion Zhu said that the hospital was called Zion Mechanical Hospital Zhu. She asked why she needed this. Closing my eyes, Li Tongyang said she was just asking. Zion Zhu asked the main character why he was so interested in the affairs of travelers. He said that he also wants to look at another world, and he is very envious of the traveler. Zion Zhu said that this world is very dangerous, except for the people from Li, Cheng, Sin, Kamishiro and Kashima corporations, and the rest are in dire situations every day, worse than in the outside world. The main character was silent for a while, looking into the bowl of rice. Wiping the table with empty plates, Zion Zhu said she would clean up. Sin Chen, clearing the table nearby, asked what she planned to do next. The woman's hand suddenly stopped with a rag in her hand. She said she wants to pick up Li Tongyang and live for a while at her grandmother's house in Zhen City, and they will leave tomorrow. She smiled and said that she would then return to visit Li's father Tongyang. The main character smiled and said that many people go to Zhen City every day. Buying tickets is not easy, and it is better to do it now. Zion Zhu agreed. Looking at the phone, she asked why there was an error when issuing a ticket. Sin Cheng thought that, as he thought, she was actually banned from leaving the city. While sweeping the floor, he thought that after the unsuccessful purchase of a Zion train ticket Zhu tried again, but failed. Frowning, he thought that this mysterious organization must have connections among the authorities, and he did not want to be limited to this city, so no matter what their goal was, it was better for him not to reveal it for now. He sat down on the sofa next to Li Tongyang, and she said that he had never looked so directly at her mother before. With a wink, she asked in a whisper if he invited her mother to the house because she was beautiful. The main character told her to stop making things up. Li Tongyang said that her mother is really very beautiful and is also an art teacher at Bema School. Zion Zhu told the main character that she found a couple of dirty clothes and she would take them to wash. She said that after his parents divorced, it is not easy for him to live here alone. And in the future, if he has dirty clothes, he can immediately bring them to her so that she can wash them. Sin Cheng, looking after them, tried to say that he could do it himself. Zion Zhu ignored him, called her daughter home and said that Sin Cheng needs to repeat his lessons. The main character looked after them in amazement. After some time, he was lying on the bed with the phone in his hand. He thought that his classmates were still discussing the events related to the travelers, and even the incident with Zion Zhu has become a topic of conversation among residents of Low City. Sin Cheng thought that Hezaya Xiao has not yet released new strategies related to the inner world. Looking at the screen of his phone, he thought that there was still no news from his mother. An incoming call from my mother appeared on the screen. She said that she had already sent his father money for living expenses. The main character said that he needs to pay for his textbooks this week. She said that Hayahao suddenly had a fever, so she wouldn't be able to come see him for the weekend. She told him to go to bed early and fall behind in his studies. After a short silence, Sin Cheng said, Okay. He hung up. Looking down sadly, he thought that she had finally called. But it seems that she no longer remembers that he skipped class. The main character threw his phone on the bed. Looking at the ceiling, he thought that now it doesn't matter. 7.20 a.m., countdown, 20 hours 40 minutes. Sin Cheng on his morning jog saw clothes hanging above him, and thought that, surprisingly, she had washed all his clothes, and Zion Zhu is truly a very hard worker. Zion Zhu looked out of the window with a smile and told him that she had prepared rice porridge. She invited him to eat. The main character, waving his hand, modestly refused and thought that he had not seen someone treat him so well for a long time and he was a little unusual, 
He took a bite of the bar with a crunch. He entered the territory of the foreign language school. Sin Chen grabbed Nang Zhengchen by the wrist. He asked what happened, whether he was going to buy the high-tech nanosocks sold by the group of scammers he joined yesterday, or ask for big money from rich ladies. Nang Zhengchen asked if he had read their class group. He said that someone from their school turned out to be a traveler, and he was in the office right now. The main character asked how they knew about this, because yesterday there was no one with mechanical limbs at school. Nang Zhengchen said that he himself boasted, endured it all day, and finally last night when talking with his classmates he could not restrain himself. Frowning, Sin Cheng wondered if there really were so many world travelers at the Low City Foreign Language School. He thought, if there are more than 20,000 people in one institution, only in this school four travelers are already known. Then how many are there in total in the country? Assuming that the travelers were found in 19 cities, their total number is also not small. He thought that others would learn about the rule that travelers are limited to a few cities. The protagonist wondered if people from all over the country would flock to these 12 cities and hope that they too would become the third, fourth, or fifth batch of travelers. He thought that perhaps this was not the case now, but if a third group of travelers appeared that confirmed this guess, then the assumption would become reality. He thought that he was afraid that in the future, these couple dozen cities, including Low City, would become increasingly busy. Two girls were whispering in the corridor, looking at some guy. The guy walked along the corridor, looking down, surrounded by teachers. The main character said that the one who was taken by the teachers must be the world traveler, and they were late. Putting his hand on Nang's shoulder Jenchen, he called him to class. With his face on his hand, Sin Cheng thought that those people from the secret organization might come to the school, and the transition to another world would happen soon, so he didn't need any surprises. He thought that if they could restrict Zion's movement Zhu may have the power to request access to CCTV cameras, and although the area in which his house is located is relatively old and there are not many cameras there, there is still no need to relax. Closing his eyes, he thought that today he would not leave the classroom anywhere except the toilet. Nang Zhengchen told him to look here. He exclaimed that Zia Xiao have laid out a new strategy. On the screen was a video of Zia Xiao, who said that for some reason he could not upload a new video yesterday. He said that today's strategy is in addition to the review of the inner world, the fight for the position of the shadow of the Sin Corporation. Sin Corporation is one of the five largest companies in the domestic world. Shadow is a person of the Sin Corporation who has power in the shadow world. It is said that this is a tradition that the King Clan has followed for over a thousand years. From time to time a new shadow is chosen and a struggle begins between the distinguished sons. The choice of a new shadow greatly enlivens the entire inner world. There are currently eight known candidates for the position of the shadow, each of whom has a unique talent. Sin Huai, China Weng, China Shi. However, there is another person who is very mysterious, and he has not yet established his identity. The main character thought that this must be the reason why he appeared in prison number 18. And this is really like an addition to Yuri's revenge. Countdown, 6 hours 20 minutes. Looking at Nang Zhengchen, he thought that excitement was written all over his face. He thought that if this fool really ended up in prison number 18, then he would help him at the risk of being discovered. Sin Cheng told him that if he crosses the border of the worlds tonight, he needs to be careful, because, as he saw on the internet, this world is not safe. Nang Zhengchen said unconvincingly that he was not a traveler. When leaving, the main character told him to just remember this. He thought that the fact that he could keep it a secret until now showed that this guy had some ideas. The full moon was shining in the night sky. Sin Cheng opened the front door of his apartment with a click. Zion appeared at the door, who waved her hand with a smile. The main character asked if she wanted something. She said he knows she is a traveler and the countdown will end soon. She fearfully said that the inner world is very dangerous, and she is not sure that she will be able to return. Zion Zhu asked if he could take care of Li Tongyong if she doesn't come back tomorrow. Sin Cheng asked why she said that. He said that she would definitely be able to return safe and sound. Zion Zhu said that he doesn't know how dangerous this world is to comfort her like that, but she knows it very well. Lowering her eyes in fear, she said that without experience working in the Big Five, human life is worth nothing. She said she didn't ask him to look after Li Tongyong as long because tomorrow her grandmother will arrive from Zhen City. Sin Cheng promised her with a smile that he would do it, but he still hopes that she will be okay. Zion Zhu, breathing out a sigh of relief, thanked him. She said that she would leave the key to her house with him, and if he needed anything, he could open the door. Having given him the key, she closed the door. Looking at the key in his hand, the main character thought that this was trust in him. Countdown, 10 minutes. Sin Cheng put something in his mouth. He pinched his hand again. 
The countdown was approaching zero as he sat on the bed. The countdown has reached zero. The world turned blue. Then the world around again shattered into fragments. Next to the pillow on the bed there were still the words that the main character had written. He was lying on the bed of his prison cell. Sin Cheng smiled and thought that fortunately he had come here again. Otherwise Li's previous efforts and received sympathy Shutton would have been in vain. Getting up in bed, he thought that it didn't matter to him what his position was, because in the strategy he's Ayak Sao was told that he is a very important figure in this world, and now one can make sure that every transition is a continuation of the past. The main character thought that the learned notes of the canon would still be useful, and probably most travelers are still confused and do not know how to get what they need from this world, but he has already crossed Lee's environment Shutton. He thought that perhaps they had seen a magnificent and wonderful world outside, but that did not matter. Looking at the flash drive in his hand, Sin Cheng thought that if you carry a thing in your body, then it can cross this border between worlds. Looking at his bruise, he thought that the wound from the outside world was also preserved, and this proved that his body was the one that passed through the border. He relies on his methods to gradually increase his knowledge of the world and the mechanism of transition through worlds. The main character thought that he doesn't know why, but compared to the alien outside world, he even thinks that he misses the noise a little which he hasn't heard in the past two days. Noticing that the limit was still two days, he wondered if the duration of the countdown was changing, and if it might increase or decrease in the future. Sin Cheng walked out into the noisy prison corridor. Noticing his appearance, Li Shutton opened his mouth slightly. Raising two fingers, Lin Ziyak Sao showed him a welcoming gesture with a smile. The main character silently looked at them while the other prisoners looked at him with envy. He turned to them, frowning sternly. The crowd around him parted, and he walked through, raising his hand. Sin Cheng thought that yesterday at 12 am a new group of people should have been escorted here. He thought that the second group of travelers should have already entered the inner world. He wondered how he should discover them, and if they really were there, how he should hide his identity. The main character noticed Liu Deju was from a parallel class surrounded by prisoners and thought that he couldn't come down yet because he would definitely recognize him. Someone on the upper floors shouted that new people had arrived and they would soon have a lot of fun. Lu, grinning evilly, greeted the new arrivals in prison number 18. Sin Cheng thought that Lu was troublesome at first, but when he returned, he had some warm feelings for the man. Hearing the words about the 18th prison, Lu Deju sharply raised his head up. He asked one of the prisoners if Li was there shutting. The prisoner with the shaved head wondered if this man might be his acquaintance. Pointing his finger, he said that this was the man below. Smiling nervously, Liu Deju thought that his Ayak Sao really didn't lie. He thought that this man's character resembled that of the boss. Lin Ziyak Sao yawned boredly behind Li Shutton. Hearing the roar, he looked in the direction of the noise. Liu Deju scaredly ran away from the crowd of prisoners with a tray in his hands. He thought that he would soon find Li Shutton. A snap of his fingers on his forehead stopped his rapid approach. Lin Ziyak Sao said that these two are really strange. He asked how newcomers could come and look for his boss. A crowd of prisoners looked ominously at Liu Deju. He said that he came to receive a mission. Lin Ziyak Sao thought with disgust on his face that he had not seen him in the organization. He wondered what kind of trouble it was that made everything look like a conspiracy. Liu Deju said that he came for a promotion mission. Slapping his hands, Lin Ziyak Sao shouted at him to let him go. The prisoners watched with awkward grins. Falling to his knees, Liu Deju shouted to Li Shutton that he came here to receive a promotion mission. Li Shutton sat silently at the table, not even looking at him. The prisoners in the crowd looked at each other. They started laughing evilly, asking what this fool was talking about. In the eyes of Liu, trembling with fear burst into tears. Sighing and waving his hand, Lin Ziyak Sao said that this is some weirdo again. Prisoners brutally grabbed Liu Deju, and he wondered what went wrong, because he went straight to Prison 18. And isn't this the beginning of the legendary path of the Chosen One? He thought that the strategy Ziyak Sao mentions three career paths, the first two are vague, and only through this prison seems to be the most feasible. Looking after the departing Lin Ziyak Sao, he thought that this seemed to be an inappropriate place for a promotion mission. He screamed and demanded to be released, and Lin Ziyak Sao turned around. Liu Deju broke free from the crowd's grip and ran forward. One of the prisoners, cursing, exclaimed that he dared to bite him. Liu Deju began knocking on the iron doors with both fists. He demanded to be released, shouting that they wanted to torture him. The prisoners approached him with evil laughter, and he moved in fear. He was surrounded by huge steel robots and drones with lasers. His legs weakened and he fell to the floor, trembling. The robot standing in front of him was emitting steam. 
There was a scream. The main character sighed and wondered if this guy was crazy. After all, having just arrived in the new world, he should first observe the situation. Looking around, Lin Ziyik Xiao asked his boss if he thought things were a little strange lately. He said that the day before yesterday, a guy went crazy, saying something about Low City, acting like he was the heir to a corporation, and today this fool came to get a promotion mission from him. He asked what kind of mission this was. Li Shutton said that this is really strange. Lin Ziyuk Sao secretly tried to pet the cat. Sharply opening her eye, the cat looked at him. Sharply removing his hand from the back of his head, Lin Ziyuk Sao asked where Sin is Cheng. He asked if yesterday, when he went down to dinner, he was not quite active, and why he was not visible today. The main character stood not far from the laughing crowd, in which Lu was, approaching him. He told him after the meal to allow his men to check all the new arrivals and question them about their identity and origins outside. He said that he knows that the welcoming ceremony is their custom, but they don't need to start too harshly. Lu obeyed. Sin Cheng thought that he didn't know if there were still travelers hiding here, and if there really were, then they couldn't invent the identity of the outside world. He thought that those who can clearly explain their status are the people of this world, and those who cannot must be travelers. He thought that this Nang Zhengchen does not appear to have entered Prison 18. The main character walked among the tables in a noisy room. Lu whispered something in his ear, and Sin Cheng thought that there must have been no new travelers. He sat down with a creak at the table opposite Li Shutton. He asked if he was playing Zianqi again today. Li Shutton said no and he'll leave it for a few days because he has more to think about. He added that, moreover, a guest was coming to visit them. He said with a grin that it was an uninvited guest. Lee Shutton stroked the cat in his hands. The main character said that he just saw the commotion below. He asked what was going on. Chewing. He thought that the one whom Lee Shutton could call an intruder. He was definitely not an ordinary person. And he doesn't want to interfere with something that he can't control now, so there's no point in asking. Li Shutton, closing his eyes, said he doesn't know. Sin Chen, with his mouth curled, thought that the intersection had led Li Shutton as confused, and this is probably the first time he has encountered such a situation. He thought that Liu Deju, a fool, having read his manual Ziyuk Sao really treated him like a game NPC. The countdown on his hand showed 37 hours. Everyone present except Li Shutton looked towards the opening door. The door rose up, and behind it stood a man dressed as a prisoner. He had a bald head, and there were three rings in his ears. The prisoners opened their mouths in amazement. A strong man entered the prison, stretching his neck. He was surrounded by robotic guards and had steel shackles on his feet. The stomp echoed throughout the room, and drones hovered in the air above his head. A machine gun attached to rails on the ceiling was aimed at the newly arrived man. The man stood calmly in front of the amazed prisoners. The main character thought that this was the first time he had seen someone being escorted alone in the light of day, and the first time the security forces in prison number 18 had been so involved. He thought that he used to think that Yuang is quite big and strong, but this prisoner turned out to be a little more interesting. Silence reigned in the prison, and the robot guards stood motionless. The new prisoner forcefully grabbed the prisoner with blonde hair by the face. The guy's eyes turned red. The bald man lifted the guy off the ground with one hand and began to crack his neck. Looking at him with a threatening expression, he asked where Lee Shutton was. The guy gasped, his eyes began to roll back, and he pointed his finger towards Lee Shutton's desk. Sin Cheng, Lee Shutton and his subordinates looked sternly at the new prisoner. He threw the guy on the floor and started walking towards them. Lee Shutton stood up and said that he didn't expect this guest to be so straightforward. He told the main character that his name was Go Hacheng and he should have listened to him. Holding the cat in his hands and stepping forward, he told him to stay behind Yi Wang for a while so as not to get hurt. Looking at the main character, Yi Wang thought that it seemed that he and Lin Ziyuk Xiao had underestimated how much the boss liked him since he reminded him of this. Go Hucheng was approaching Li Shutton with long strides, and Yi Wang thought that Go Hucheng was really here, and it was not surprising that the boss said that the Lama would come from the south. Lu thought with a grin that when Sin Cheng came, he didn't even look for evidence, just played Zianqi and read books with Li Shutton every day, as if nothing had happened, and he wanted to wait for Go Hucheng to come and arrange turmoil so that they can then reap the harvest. He thought it was clever, stopping. Go Hucheng said he would get straight to the point, and he was here for the forbidden item Ace 5. He will demand to tell him where it is hidden, and he will take it and leave. Li Shutton gently patted the cat on the back. Letting the cat fall to the ground, he said with a slight smile that if he was polite to the elder, he would not get hurt. Go Hucheng said that if he gave him Ace 5, he would naturally be more polite to him. Li Shutton asked why the peak suddenly became interested in forbidden items. He said that, judging by his tone, 
He thought that he had joined the Forbidden and Inquisition. Go Huching said that he wants to fight the big boys, so he can't refuse help, and they knights have the same goal as them, so they must understand their situation. Li Shutton asked why come to get a forbidden item in Prison 18. Go Hucheng said that there are rumors that the Chen Consortium made a deal with him to give him absolute freedom in Prison 18 if he can contain and suppress it. And the forbidden item that he, Li Shutton, personally contains and suppresses must be extremely strong. Closing his eyes, Li Shutton grinned and said that he was mistaken, because he had nothing to do with Cheng. He told him not to believe the rumors. The main character thought that in the small guide Hezayak Xiao he heard about the Forbidden Inquisition, which seems to exist solely for the sake of forbidden items. He thought that the forbidden item that Go Ha Cheng was talking about must be the same item that he came to find, and perhaps this was his task in the Battle of Shadows. Stepping forward with a darkly annoyed expression on his face, Go Ha Cheng asked where Ace 5 was. Li Shutton shook his head and said that he knew where it was, but would not tell him. Go ha Cheng stomped his boot hard on the floor, scaring the surrounding prisoners. The drones, shouting warnings from their speakers, pointed their lasers at him. Standing right in front of Li Shutton, he asked why. Smirking, Li Shutton said, just like that. He said he quite likes Ace-5. The machine guns on the ceiling lined up, aiming at Go ha Cheng. Someone exclaimed that he launched a metal storm. He said that in the past it would have taken half an hour of unrest for the metal storm to begin, and only after the mechanical guards had failed to control it. Sin Cheng thought that there were 72 metal storms, of which 36 were in motion. Stomping his foot hard, Go Ha Cheng pushed off the ground and rushed forward. Gritting his teeth angrily, he swung his fist, shrouded in a dark aura. His fist was rapidly approaching Li Shutton's unwavering face. The machine guns flashed red. The machine guns began to shoot indiscriminately at all the prisoners, and they began to run away in fear. At this time, 36 metal storms fired rubber bullets, purely for suppression purposes. The remaining 36 units are real deadly weapons, however, under this stormy rain of bullets there are exceptions. Yuang touched the ground, activating the deployment of the dome. Go Hucheng struck, causing a small explosion from the air pressure. He opened his eyes in amazement, looking at Li Shutton standing on his feet in front of him. Li Shutton stopped his fist with two fingers of his hand. He looked at him with a serious expression on his face. Go Hucheng opened his mouth in shock. The machine gun stopped firing. The dome began to dissipate, and Li Shutton turned around. Seeing something, he frowned and opened his mouth. The main character sat untouched at the table, surrounded by wounded prisoners. Li Shutton thought that 36 metal storms had hit him, and he was sitting in the blind spot of all trajectories. He thought that this was the only shooting blind spot in Prison 18. Smirking, he thought that this Sin Cheng's temperament and abilities were not possessed by his peers. He wondered if this was the shadow Sin would choose. Li Shutton threw Go Ha Cheng aside with one clear blow of his fist and he wondered when he would find such a successor. Go Ha Cheng braked with his hand and knee on the floor, rolling a little due to inertia. Sweating nervously, he cleared his throat and raised his palm. Sitting on the floor, he thought that from the beginning to the end of the fight, he only made his opponent's clothes flutter several times and there are rumors that Li Shutton is a demigod. Li Shutton looked at him with his hand outstretched, and Go Ha Cheng thought that the difference between him and Li Shutton was like an abyss. Smiling widely, Li Shutton asked if he wanted to continue fighting. Turning around and waving his hand, Go Ha Cheng refused and asked why fight if he couldn't win. He told him not to worry, and even if he didn't tell him, he would still be able to find the forbidden item Ace 5. Smiling, Li Shutton said that everything was fine, and he could search as much as he wanted. Sin Cheng thought that this bald guy was very simple, just about to fight to the death, but now he suddenly gave up, and his approach before and after is very different. Go Ha Cheng thought that since Li Shutton knew where the forbidden item was, he would constantly keep an eye on it. He thought what if one day he lets it slip. Li Shutton sat down at the table and calmly asked if this position was calculated. The main character said that although his computing ability is much better than that of an ordinary person, he is not able to carry out such a complex calculation, and he can only guess. Smiling, Li Shutton said that a guess was not enough to help him find this position so accurately. Sin Cheng said that a short calculation allowed him to target only four areas, and the place where he sits every day is one of them, and he doesn't have to think about the rest. Li Shutton chuckled and said that he dared to make a bet. Go Ha Cheng sat on the floor in the lotus position, surrounded by robots enforcing discipline and prisoners cleaning up trash. Lin Xiao said that the Celestials fight, 
But ordinary people suffer, and for those who fought, it was nothing, and for those prisoners who did not fight, it was really unlucky. He told Go Hucheng with a smile that he was rumored to be a compassionate person who does good deeds. He asked what about those who were harmed by him. Go Hucheng frowned and asked about what him being in prison says about him harming innocent people. He said that those who are here are not innocent. Lin Xiaoxiao said that he is a hypocrite. Go Hucheng, opening one eye, asked to be reminded that he was not a monk, and he might not use the word compassion to describe him. Closing his eyes and sweating, he thought that everything inside hurt as if he had been burned by fire. Lin Xiaoxiao looked at Yi Wang with a smile. A magic dome appeared around Sin Cheng, Li Shutton and his subordinates, and Go Hucheng thought that the one who was not hit by the bullets was also one of them. Lin Xiaoxiao winked at the main character and told him not to worry and talk because he would not be heard. Li Shutton said that in the morning he saw Lu Guani interrogating those people during the welcoming ceremony. He asked if he told him to do this. The main character said yes. Li Shutton narrowed his eyes and asked why they were interrogated. Sin Cheng said that he wanted to see what other forces were vying with him for the forbidden item. He thought that he needed to find a suitable excuse for his actions. Li Shutton closed his eyes and said with a smile that he liked his honesty, but he saw that Lu did not bully the newcomers this time. He asked if it was because of him too. He said that he remembers that when he first arrived, he did not help other newcomers. The main character said that he does everything to the best of his ability. He thought that if he couldn't protect himself, he would calmly watch everyone else die and not help. That was his principle. Sin Cheng's life was never easy, so he learned early on to be selfish. This attitude towards life was given to him by life itself, and he did not make a choice. Lin Xiao, noticing something, turned around. Go Hucheng lifted his body off the ground with two fingers, glancing in their direction. And Lin Xiao opened his mouth in shock. Curling his mouth, he thought that this guy couldn't hear them, so he got closer. He thought, doesn't he know that he is clearly visible, because he is quite large. Go Hucheng, sweating nervously and pursing his lips, thought that he had been noticed. Silence hung between the people under the dome and Go Hucheng in an awkward position, and he walked back on his fingers. The dome dissipated and Li Shutton said to disperse. He said that he was sorry that they could not play Zayanki today, and he would go read. Lin Xiaoxiao squatted in front of Go Hucheng. He told him to admit that he lost, because they did not want to quarrel with the spades. He said that he knew it was hard out there in the wasteland, but they had better not cause problems. He asked if he thought there was nothing he could do with it. Opening one eye, Go Hucheng threateningly told him to just try to touch even a hair on his head. Lin Xiaoxiao looked at his completely bald head, shining from the light, in bewilderment. A portion of food was placed on the main character's tray. He thought that the prison food, although synthetic, tasted like regular meat, and it was much better than the press cookies that he eats almost every day. Sitting at the table, surrounded by empty tables, he began to think. Sin Cheng wondered why a quarter of the cameras were pointed at him. He wondered if it was because he had found a shooting blind spot and thereby attracted someone's attention. He wondered who was behind this prison. Lin Xiaoxiao, sitting down in front of him, said that the boss had just told the chef to replace this meat with real meat and give him as much as he wanted. The main character asked why. Smirking and placing his foot on the bench, Lin Xiaoxiao told him that he would soon realize that this was not necessarily a good thing. Sin Cheng poured water from the tap into a glass. He looked at his tired face reflected in the mirror. There were noticeable bags under his eyes. As he lay down in bed, he thought that he had that feeling again. The main character lay down in bed and closed his eyes. Opening his eyes, he saw two people sitting on the sand. Sin Cheng found himself under the scorching desert sun with a backpack on his back. A tired guy with dark hair was sitting on the sand in front of him. The main character was breathing heavily. His lips were dry and cracked. He took a bottle of water from his backpack, and the guy in front of him fell to his knees and stood up. With tired eyes bulging on his sweat-covered face, he asked to give them a sip of his water, because if they didn't drink, they would die. He said they wouldn't drink for free and he could name his price. He asked if he could name the price in the face of his companions dying of thirst. Sin Cheng said with a cool face that first he would let the person next to him watch him die of thirst, and then he would let him name the price. Lin Xiaoxiao asked in shock if he was still human. The guy behind him disappeared into the air like a mirage. Sitting near the fire, the main character said that he immediately realized that this was his nightmare, so he did not feel any sympathy. Lin Xiaoxiao said that it was truly amazing that he could enter a nightmare, remain conscious and remember it, and he should be able to resist the call of the dream demon. The main character said that he really can do it. Lin Xiaoxiao asked why he entered if he could resist. He said that if he waited five minutes without falling asleep, he would get rid of the call of the sleep demon. 
Sin Cheng wiped the water from his lips and said that he thought he had something to say, so he came. Lin Xiao grinned slyly while rubbing his chin, and the main character asked what he wanted to check this time. Lin Xiao said that at first the boss wanted him to take him for a walk, using the nightmare to cultivate his humanity and let him experience suffering. He said that now he can resist the dream demon so easily, it seems that in the future the nightmare will be useless, and the boss must experience it himself. The main character thought that the scene in the desert was different from the previous one, and it looked more like a lesson arranged by a teacher for a student. Lin Xiaoxiao said that the boss only admires him for now and nothing more, and it is not yet clear whether he can become the boss's disciple in the future. After a short silence, Sin Cheng said that he envied him. Lin Xiaoxiao glanced at him. He said that he was really jealous of him, because not everyone can become the boss's disciple, at least he and He Wang can't. The main character asked why. Lin Xiaoxiao said because none of them passed the first test. Pointing his finger at him, he said that the boss believed that he should be able to withstand it. He said that this is the path of life and death, and every time you cultivate, you need to go through a desperate situation and suffer. Qin Cheng asked why him. Lin Xiaoxiao said because the boss said that he has the courage to fight and survive at any cost. The main character asked, if you have to suffer, why is he still jealous? Lin Xiaoxiao said, because this is a cultivation path with unlimited potential. But for him and Yi Wang, the upper limit has already been determined. And although this path is full of suffering, only by going through painful experience can one rise higher. The main character, rubbing his chin, asked how old Li Shutton was. He wondered if he divided his life equally between the two worlds, would that mean he would age faster than people in the outside world? and if Lee Shutton's abilities could go beyond the ordinary and extend his lifespan. Lin Xiaoxiao said, 52 years old. Sin Cheng thought in amazement that he looked only 33 minus 36 years old. Lin Xiaoxiao chuckled and said that he looked like he had never seen anything in his life, and he would not be surprised if a person like the boss lived for more than a hundred years. He said that they had been watching him since he was a child, and he had not seen him change much over the years. Sin Cheng asked why they followed him. Lin Xiaoxiao said that there is no reason, and he, Yi Wang and many others are all orphans. He said that he was born into the Sin family, so he wouldn't understand how cruel life is outside or how easy it is to become an orphan. Maybe the parents met club members on the way and got into a fight. Maybe there was a chemical leak at the plant where they worked and maybe they were hacked while connecting to themselves using a neural connection. Then he can't pay his property taxes and the insurance company refuses to pay. Then the bank takes his house and throws him out on the street, and no one cares whether he's alive or dead. At this time, his life is already dark and bright, and the club wants to recruit him as a child drug courier to transport drugs, torture him even more cruelly, and then film him to sell in the virtual world for money. It is at this time that a person appears in front of him. This man tells him, come with me, I will give you a new life. Lin Xiaoxiao, looking up, said that no matter who he was, he would go with him. Sin Cheng thought about what the suffering in his life meant compared to them. He asked why he took them in. Lin Xiaoxiao stood up and said, because they are useful people, and what he wants to do cannot be done alone. The main character thought that he still did not know what the goals of the knights and pikes were. He wondered what kind of giant the spades were opposing, whether it was a big five company or something else. He thought that Li Shutton accepted Lin Xiaoxiao, and he wang with the intention of using them, but they don't seem to mind at all. Lin Xiaoxiao got to his feet and told him to rest until the morning. Waking up in bed, Sin Cheng thought that he had already seen the incomprehensible and mysterious level of Li Shutton. He wondered if the cannon he had was enough to exchange it for the opportunity to open the door to a new world. Opening his eyes, he thought that he could not be sure that the cannon was enough. Besides, he could not explain where he got it from, so he would wait a little longer. A crash was heard from one of the cells, and someone demanded to be released. The guy knocked on the glass, asking if anyone was here and why he was locked here. On his hand was a countdown showing 24 hours. Exhausted, he knelt down, begging to be released. Trembling, the guy thought that others in the inner world had a great life, mechanical limbs, club members and all that kind of stuff. He thought about why he became like this, how he came here, and what he should tell his classmates when he returns to the outside world in 24 hours. He wondered whether to tell him that he had successfully moved, like a prisoner. Hugging his knees, he sadly thought that he shouldn't have shown off to everyone before he came here. The countdown showed 16 hours and 20 minutes. Li Shutton placed the playing piece on the board. He said that after he told Lu Guanyi to keep a sense of proportion, there were fewer sobbing newcomers in this prison. He asked if he had noticed that the other two factions in the prison were already very unhappy with Lu Guanyi. 
Sin Cheng said that he knows that usually the three factions take turns holding the newcomer welcoming ceremony, which is considered everyone's entertainment. And now that Lu Guani has taken the matter into his own hands, it will inevitably cause dissatisfaction among others, but he believes that he is capable of handling this on his own. Li Shutton asked if he ever thought that these newcomers might not be grateful to him. The main character said that when someone meets a beggar on the road and throws him some change, that change is not really enough to get him out of poverty, but it buys him a little inner peace and joy. Li Shutton laughed with his eyes closed. Go Hucheng sat down on the chair next to the main character with a crash. Everyone looked at him silently with expressionless faces. Go Hucheng thought, if you can't win, join. He said that he can be considered a respected person in spades, and they themselves eat real meat, and they offer him to eat synthetic. He asked if this is how guests are greeted. Lin Xiao asked if he was the same as them. He suggested that he fight the boss again and if he wins, they will give him food. Go Hucheng said that it is not always worth fighting and killing, it is not good. He asked about what the three of them could eat for real, but this chess player also eats it, despite the fact that he is an ordinary person. He stabbed his chopsticks forcefully into the piece of meat lying on the rice. Leaning towards the main character, Go Hucheng told him to take another portion and give this one to him. Sin Cheng frowned and looked at him silently. Li Shutton drank his tea without reacting, and the main character wondered if he wanted to see how he would handle it. He sighed. Go Hucheng, pushing his tray of food towards him, laughed and said that they all saw that he himself refused. Saying that he would immediately get down to business, he brought the piece of meat to his mouth. The world around the main character paused, sitting in the yellow space of his memory, surrounded by images of events that happened recently. He thought that this was not what he was looking for. He began to quickly rewind images of events, like a film. Having discovered something, he frowned and opened his mouth. Sin Cheng sighed, and a yellow flash flashed in front. The world around him resumed, and he loudly called Lu Guani. Go Hucheng looked at him in amazement before he could take a bite of meat. Lu immediately appeared next to him and said with a smile that he was here. He asked what was the matter. The main character seriously said that he would name the numbers of eight people, and he would bring them. Soon, several prisoners appeared next to their table, and Go Hucheng gaped in surprise. He gritted his teeth in dissatisfaction, and Li Shutton grinned. Sin Cheng asked him if these eight people were his people. The prisoners behind him were noticeably nervous. Go Hucheng, sweating nervously, said, not all of them. The main character said that after he was escorted here, he looked at the five of them, and all five extended their index fingers, frowning. He said that while he wasn't sure what the gesture meant, he was pretty sure they showed it to him. He said that the other three immediately looked at each other and exchanged glances. Lin Xiao thought, how could he calmly watch in such a situation? He thought that at that time they only paid attention to the boss and the hail of bullets and didn't care at all about observing everyone's reactions. Lee Shutton said with a smile that in Prison 18 there are different people mixed together, and it is quite normal for people from other forces to watch him here. Lin Xiao asked if they needed to transfer all these people to other prisons. Lee Shutton said that transferring eight people for no reason would give the outside world a reason to suspect him of something. He told Yi Wang to isolate the eight and interrogate them one by one to find out who sent the other three. Yi Wang obeyed. Lu pointed with both hands at the crowd of prisoners. Sin Cheng glared at Lin Xiao, who whispered to his boss that this boy had found all of their people. Li Shutton smiled and told the main character that although he is not yet a superman, his ability to remember and analyze is unmatched among many extraordinary people. Duo Hucheng looked at Sin Cheng and thought that it turns out that he is not a man of knights. He asked what his name was. They answered him, saying that his name was Sin Cheng. Duo Hucheng winced and asked when the knights started collaborating with the Sin Consortium. Li Shutton asked if a person with the surname Sin is obligated to be part of the family. He said that even people from the Kin family cannot stay in it for the rest of their lives. He asked if there was a very famous person in the wild area with the surname Sin. Go Hucheng fell silent and glanced at the main character, pushing him his tray of food. He asked what his impression of the spades was. Kin Cheng said with an indifferently cold face, not very good. He thought that based on his personality, he had come to compete with him for a forbidden item, so he shouldn't be nice to him. Slaps and crashes were heard in the prison, and drones began to fly in the air. Several dead prisoners with reddened eyes lay on the floor. Using a white handkerchief, Yi Wang opened the mouth of one of the dead prisoners. He told his boss that it was a capsule of poison hidden in the back molars, and when he opened their mouth, there was a faint smell of bitter almonds, hence it was cyanide. Go Hucheng frowned and said that these three people were not among his peaks. Li Shutton, holding a figure for Zianqi, said with a smile that suicide bombers are a little unexpected. 
the main character looked at one of the corpses, clenching his trembling fist, he thought that, whether it was the outside world or the inside, this was the first time he had encountered death directly. Squinting his eyes and pursing his lips, he thought that this was, after all, a world where wild animals ran rampant. Security robots collected corpses from the floor, wrapped in white cloth. There are 15 hours and 22 minutes left on the countdown. Lee Shutton looked directly at the main character, sitting opposite him. He asked if this was the first time he had seen death. The main character nodded without opening his mouth. Lee Shutton asked if he was afraid. Sin Cheng answered honestly, a little. He thought that the teachers taught him what a function is, what a subject, predicate and object are. His parents taught him to use chopsticks, wash clothes and take care of himself, but no one taught him what death is. Looking down, he thought that only by seeing it with his own eyes can he understand how shocking it is when life disappears before his eyes. Lee Shutton, holding up a piece with two fingers, asked if he knew that every person has two lives. Having placed the piece on the board, he said that the second life begins when a person realizes that there is only one life. He said that from this moment a person begins to tell himself about the importance of time and clearly realize how much time he has wasted. The main character opened his mouth in amazement. Having calmed down, he lowered his gaze and thought that the more afraid he was, the more he needed to remain calm. Looking at the move that Lee Shutton was making, he thought that he needed to study his past, and he needed to think about his future. Lee Shutton, moving a piece on the game board, said that there was a high probability that these three suicide bombers had come for him. So since he helped him find them, he owed him. Smiling, he said that he could exchange his debt for one thing. He asked what he wanted. Sin Cheng said that he needed a list of Lee Consortium members. Lee Shutton asked why not ask for a way to become a superman. He said that there are not many people in this world who can make him obliged to them, but he is the only one who does not value this opportunity very much. The main character said that the way to become a superman cannot be equated with the value of this secret at all, and he does not think that it is worth it. He added that, moreover, when the time comes, he himself will give it to him, without exchanging it for anything. Lee Shutton tapped his playing piece on the table. Smiling, he said that he was smarter than he thought and more patient and reserved. But he was right, some things cannot be exchanged, and he will get them when the time comes. Looking at him with a sly smile, he said that although he was a little disappointed that he did not see blood, he had thought it over carefully, and if he had disdained for life, it would not have been interesting. Lee Shutton told Lin Ziyak Sao to bring the list. He obeyed, nodding. Lee Shutton told the main character that he was curious why he needed it. Closing his eyes, Sin Cheng asked that he didn't need to explain it. With a wave of his hand, Lee Shutton said that he would not ask about it because it was a fee for a service and he could do whatever he wanted. The main character was returning to his prison cell. He thought that at first he thought that Lin Ziyak Sao would come to test him with the sleep demon today, but he did not come, and perhaps Lee Shutton thinks that there is no need to test him anymore. He thought that he vaguely felt that he was getting closer and closer to the path of the Superman. Sin Chen closed his eyes and thought that the anticipation of returning this time is not as exciting as the previous few, because he saw with his own eyes what death is. The world again fell apart into fragments, and he passed into another world. On a tree branch under the window into the main character's room, two birds were chirping. Sin Cheng extended his hand upward, on which the countdown showed 40 hours and 20 minutes. He thought, every time the moving process occurs silently, and cannot even wake up the sleeping person. As he got dressed in his school uniform, he thought he could finally relax after returning to the outside world after two stressful days, but he was really looking forward to moving again in two days because there were even more opportunities waiting for him there. He pulled the doorknob and the door clicked open. Seeing Zion Zhu, the main character opened his mouth in amazement. After greeting her, he asked if anything had happened during the move this time. She said everything was fine and she was going to take Lee Tongyang to school. She invited him to their house in the evening after school because she would buy fish and ribs to celebrate. Sin Cheng asked, celebrate what? Zion Zhu said that they would talk about it tonight. Smiling, she said, then he will find out. The main character was walking down the street among other students. Suddenly he stopped. There was a news headline on the phone screen. Someone on the darknet sold information that killing a world traveler does not make the killer a traveler. He thought it was just a few words, but it meant someone's life was cut short. Remembering the dead prisoners, he thought that in reality it was often bloodier than it sounds in words. The bright afternoon sun shone on the school building. Liu Deju sat with a smug smile, surrounded by admiring classmates. Sin Cheng thought slightly astonished that Liu Deju from the parallel class actually came to school. He thought that at first he thought that he would suffer psychological trauma like Hu and Jixang, 
and then take a break from his studies, but he did not expect that he would turn out to be completely different. Looking at him, he thought that he was not only bragging about becoming a world traveler, but also about being imprisoned 18, and even about meeting and talking to Li Shutton. Sin Cheng left silently, sighing, while several schoolchildren admired Liu Deju, clinging to the classroom window. He thought that in the current environment, revealing himself as a world traveler was a very stupid choice, especially when he claimed that he knew one of the most important people in the inner world. He thought that he was afraid that this mysterious organization would appear soon. Among the noisy crowd, the main character noticed Nang Zhengchen. He called out to him, and he turned around slightly with a blank expression on his face. Sin Cheng asked what was wrong with him and whether someone had beaten him. Nang Zhengchen shook his head, smiled awkwardly and said that he just didn't sleep well. The main character thought that he did not have mechanical limbs or any other oddities, but he was not in a very good mood. Entering one of the classrooms, he closed the door behind them with a click. Two girls ran nearby, discussing what Liu Deju from a neighboring class was rumored to be traveling. Sin Cheng asked Nang Zhengchen in a whisper if he had been tortured after being transferred. Nang Zhengchen, visibly nervous, asked what kind of movement he was talking about. He looked around worriedly. The protagonist thought that he was almost sure that Nang Zhengchen had moved. He thought that he experienced in the inner world that his former air of dignity had turned into this. He asked what he did after moving. Nang Zhengchen said sharply that he had not moved and if anyone else said that he was a traveler, he would be angry. Sin Cheng thought that nothing could be done, since he did not answer, he could not find out his identity after moving, so there was no point in thinking about helping him. The students in the class were heatedly discussing Liu Deju, and what he said that he was communicating with Li Shutton. Ang Zhengchen fidgeted worriedly in place, sitting next to the main character. He asked in a whisper if he had told him that there was a group of world travelers. Kin Cheng said that he actually talked about it, he thought that he couldn't help himself after all. Nang Zhengchen asked if he told him that someone was selling socks from the inner world. The main character said yes. Nang Zhengchen said that it is fake, and how he knows it is not important. He said that he was not a traveler, because he couldn't even bring socks from there. He asked if he had told him that a traveler had said that he could help him contact a rich woman. The main character said yes indifferently. Nang Zhengchen said it was true. Sin Cheng turned to him in shock. Waving his hands, Nang Zhengchen said that he had read what the other people in the group said, and he was not a world traveler. The main character thought that after moving he was given to a rich woman. Nang Zhengchen calmed down, and they sat at the desk in silence. Turning to him, Sin Cheng asked how much he paid. Nang Zhengchen exclaimed that he had already said that he was not a traveler. A sound sounded from the speakers in the corridor. Hearing the stomp, the students turned around. The school head teacher with a tense expression on his face walked along the corridor, surrounded by people in black suits. The crowd was discussing the fact that they were going to a parallel class. The main character, frowning, thought that they had really come. Bang Zhengchen hunched over in fear. People in black walked confidently along the school corridor. The appearance of the men in black quickly attracted the attention of most of the students, because their unique and harsh temperament is too conspicuous in a place like school. Sin Cheng still remembers the feeling of oppression they gave him when they first met. They really took Liu Dezhou. The main character thought that the organization that the head teacher would accompany should be official, and this was somewhat encouraging. However, to his surprise, as the first lesson was ending, Liu Dezhou returned again. And according to him, after being taken to the office, the men in black asked him to leave his address and contact information, saying bye do not leave the city of Lo. The men in black told him that there were many world travelers in the city of Lo, and they were preparing a plan to bring them all together for intense training. After that, they also took out some photographs and asked him to determine whether he knew the people in them. They suspected that the man in the photo was a world traveler because he appeared at another traveler's door. Based on the CCTV footage, it was estimated that this person's activity area should be within a radius of 3 kilometers, but since the area is old, many places do not have cameras or they are broken, so they asked Liu Deju. Sin Cheng thought that the person they were looking for was him, sighing. He thought that he had put on clothes that he had not worn for two years and deliberately avoided the CCTV cameras, and it seemed that all the precautions had not been in vain. Nang Zhengchen tearfully exclaimed that someone, after moving, ended up next to the boss, talking to him, and perhaps one day will become a superman. He asked why the gap between people is so great. The main character asked in amazement if he was jealous. Nang Zhengchen asked if he was jealous. He said that he used to say that he would make a lot of money and take him out to eat 
but now it seems like he can't. Sin Cheng, putting his hand on his shoulder, told him to start studying, because there are still many ordinary people who live a good life, and it is not necessary to be a traveler. Nang Jiangchen silently lowered his head and looked away. The main character said that it seems they are the only ones who have not paid for the textbooks. He said he needed two more days. He asked if he had brought money. Dang Jiangchen said that his mother was angry with his father and returned to his grandmother's house, and he could only ask his father for money. The main character asked if his father gave him money, and what he said. Smiling gloomily, Nang Jiangchen said that he told him to return the textbook to school. Sin Cheng thought, who would have thought that the issue of paying for one textbook would confuse two world travelers? Sighing, he thought that it was time for him to think about how to earn money. Looking out the window, he thought that now all these old people have become smart, and no one wants to play Zayanki with him, so he needs to think about how to make money in the inner world. He thought that there was no reason for him to be near a mountain of treasures, but again and again return empty-handed. The main character walked among the food stalls, thinking that it seems that running away from classes has become a habit lately. He thought that when he was little, his mother would go to his grandmother, and his father would take him out and buy him a bowl of rice noodles for one and a half yuan. He had not yet gambled, he and his mother had not divorced, and his grandparents had not yet despised him. Looking out the restaurant window, Sin Cheng thought that the rice noodles that cost one and a half yuan now cost fifteen, and it seemed like there was no way to get anything back. Two guys were smoking cigarettes near the corner of a brick building. Frowning, the main character looked to the side. Someone called out to him and he turned around. Li Tongyang called him upstairs with a smile because mom would finish cooking soon. Sin Cheng, patting her on the head, asked what if he stayed at school for evening self-study. He said they didn't have to wait for him. She said that in recent days he has not been going to self-training. Li Tongyong led him into the house, holding his hand. The main character thought that there was no more broken furniture in the house, and it seemed that many things had been replaced with new ones. Zian Zhu asked if Qin Cheng had arrived. She told him to sit down quickly, because she only had to finish the soup. Looking at the delicious dishes on the table, the main character thought that compared to the tasteless food in Prison 18, this was a real improvement in nutrition. Turning to Zion Zhu, he asked what she was celebrating. She said that she had already said that she opened a mechanical clinic in the inner world. She said that this clinic used to bother her a lot because when moving, the memory is not transferred, and when people came to her to install mechanical limbs, she did not know what to do. Zion Zhu said that those who came for mechanical limbs were very scary, and with the public order in the city 18 is worst at night, it is not safe to walk on the street after 8 o'clock in the evening, so she was very worried. Sitting down at the table, she said that she didn't know how it happened, but this time, after moving, people from the Lee Consortium came to her small clinic and asked for a partnership. Smiling happily, Zion Zhu said that consortiums in the inner world rule everything, and as long as they are in the share, all criminals will bypass her. She said that not only did they give her money, but they also replaced the neon sign with the Lee logo and she is now much safer on the inside. Looking up, the main character thought about the Lee family. Smiling, he said that this really needs to be celebrated. Zion Zhu closed her eyes and said that now she no longer needs to bother him, and Lee Tong Young's grandparents don't need to come either. Looking at him, she asked if he had not been jealous of world travelers before. She said that if he did move one day, he might come to City 18 and find her. She might not do anything big, but she could protect him. Sin Cheng thought with a smile that he was already in City 18. It was a pity that ordinary people would not help in his situation. After all, things like the battle for Shadow Sin and the legacy of the Knight organization had long surpassed the understanding of ordinary travelers. He asked her if those men in black were looking for her again. Zion Zhu said that they weren't looking for her, but she was looking for them. She said that before she entrusted him with Li Tongyang, she wanted to contact them and see if she could get their help in the inner world. But they said that their organization had just been founded and they were still there it's difficult, so they can't help. After a while, Zion Zhu was washing the dishes. The main character sat on the sofa next to Li Tongyang and said that she was also a traveler. Li Tongyang, who was eating chips, asked what he was talking about. Sin Cheng said that last time she specifically asked her mother for the name of the clinic. As a result, this time the consortium acquired a stake in her clinic, carefully protecting it. He said she could deny it, but he could also tell her mom about these leads. Li Tongyang scaredly told him not to tell his mother about this. The main character thought that he guessed correctly, so yesterday he took the opportunity and asked Li Shutton for the list of members of the Li Consortium, and there really is a name called Li Tongyang. 
he asked why she didn't tell her mother about this. Li Tongyong, looking down, said that few people in the inner world would dare to tell her. But if mom found out, she would definitely try to intervene. She told him not to tell his mother, and she can give him money because she has a lot of pocket money in the inner world. The main character asked why he needed money there if he was not a traveler. Li Tongyong, bowing her head and putting her index finger to her lips, asked if he was not a traveler. King Cheng said no. He thought that this girl suspected that he was a traveler because he asked about everything. Fortunately, he quickly refused the money. They sat silently on the sofa. The main character asked if she had any pocket money in the outside world. Li Tongyong asked in shock if he wanted to take the money from the child. He said that he asked just like that. Li Tongyong buried her face in the plush toy and said that she really has no money in the outside world. She asked why he didn't change the terms. The main character asked how to change the conditions. She said she didn't know, but he still couldn't tell her mom. Rising from the sofa, Sin Cheng said that she should do it herself. He told her not to forget to take care of her mother in the inner world, because he sees how everyone says that world is very confusing. With a bright smile and two fingers, Li Tongyong told him not to worry, and when he had the opportunity to go to the inner world, she would protect him. The main character smiled and chuckled slightly. He left their house, sitting on his bed. He thought that overall, today's evening was very useful. At least Li Tongyong's identity as a traveler has been confirmed. And now that he is participating in the battle for Shadow Sin, it is better to have another friend than not having one at all. On the screen there was an article about how in foreign countries there are mysterious organizations that buy mechanical limbs at exorbitant prices and objects made using future technologies from the inner world. How to carry, wrap the medication in protective film and place it in your mouth, swallow it, or insert it into your rectum. Frowning, Sin Cheng thought that in order to bring things from the inner world, these people directly use this extreme method. He thought, if a rich man is dying of cancer and his only hope is a life-saving medicine from the inner world, then what price will he pay? He wondered what price could be equivalent to life and whether this was their goal. The main character thought that while he was still thinking about how to become a superman, someone had already started a business and if they exchanged things directly, it would inevitably reveal his identity, but he could not use this method now. He thought that he could bring the technology on a flash drive but as a traveler he could get the most important technologies of the inner world. He thought that maybe this would be possible in the future, but now it seems that there is no such person. Looking at the phone screen, Sin Cheng thought that until now in this prison 18, it has been difficult to even access outside information, and the most important thing now is to maintain a good relationship with Lee Shutton. It dawned on him and he squinted. He thought that these mysterious organizations also buy mechanical limbs, and just a few days ago a traveler's legs were cut off, and now these people are buying them at exorbitant prices, and he is afraid that this will further fuel this kind of crime against travelers. The main character remembered two smoking guys in front of his house. Pulling back the curtain, he looked out of his window with bars. He discovered that these two guys had gone somewhere. Calling on the phone, Sin Cheng gave his address and said that in the evening he met two very suspicious men and thought that they were up to something. He heard a small exclamation and realized that it was Li Tongyong's voice. Raising his head up, he shouted into the phone to immediately send a police squad here. He thought that they were here because of Zion Zhu. The main character quickly ran out into the corridor. He grabbed a shovel that was lying on the shelf. Sin Cheng frowned tensely and nervous sweat ran down his face. He thought there were two adults there, maybe more. Trembling and holding the shovel with both hands, he wondered if he could handle this. He tightly grasped the handle of the shovel with his hands. Walking out the door, the main character thought that he is not a very good guy. He is also very selfish, and seeing his classmates going crazy in Prison 18, he was indifferent, but just sit and watch like such a child. Like Li Tong Young, he cannot face cruelty. Frowning decisively, he began to climb the steps, swinging his shovel. Having climbed the flight of stairs, he saw a man falling from the steps backwards. At the top stood Zion Zhu next to the open door to her apartment. The man was lying on the steps, his arm was cut and broken. Zion Zhu was trembling, frowning and pale, part of her sweater was torn. Sin Cheng looked at her confusedly, holding a shovel. After a short silence, Zion Zhu thanked him. The main character asked if he was alone. She said there was another one, but he ran away. Sin Cheng asked if Li Tongyong was okay. She said she was scared. Going down the steps, the main character said that he had already called the police. He told her to take care of Li Tongyang. Zion Zhu extended her hand after him in confusion. Sin Cheng quickly ran outside and found a guy in a hoodie running away. 
he ran in the opposite direction. There was a plan in his head according to which, having run around the house on the other side, he would meet him again. Frowning resolutely, Sin Cheng ran forward, holding a shovel in one hand. He jumped over the stone fence with a deft movement. Having reached a dark corner, he slowed down. Down on one knee around the corner, he sat in ambush, holding a shovel at the ready. The main character was breathing heavily. The adrenaline rushing through the blood made him frown tensely. He raised the shovel above his head. He started counting from three. The wind rustled the leaves of the trees. Two. He gripped the shovel tightly in his hands. His heart was pounding and he counted to one. With a sharp blow with a shovel, Sin Cheng hit the running guy on the knees. The guy fell screaming, and the main character ran. As he walked up the steps, he saw Li Tongyang. She, frightenedly clinging to her mother, with tears in her eyes, told him that the second one had run away. The main character told her not to worry because he had found him. Between the thumb and forefinger of his hand there was a bloody callus from the handle of a shovel. Cyan Zhu, noticing the wound, asked him to wait while she brought iodine. The main character thought that, fortunately, there were no more wounds except his hand. Looking at his palm and sweating, he thought that after all, he was still an ordinary person, and now he had a very powerful brain but not a body to match. Sin Cheng told Zion Zhu not to worry because he also has all this at home. He clenched his fist and said that the police would be here soon, so he would return to his place. Smiling, he told them to remember that he didn't do anything tonight. Zion Zhu, after a short silence, obeyed. The main character thought that it seemed that it was necessary to speed up the process of acquiring abilities in the inner world. The bright morning sun was shining through the window. A rumble was heard in the room. Sin Cheng was lying in bed, and Li Tongyang called him loudly. Having fled to his room, she asked him to help her mother with a worried face. Zion Zhu, sitting on a chair, said with a tired face that her mechanical limbs had run out of power. The main character, entering the house, asked if they were really so short-lived, and how people in the inner world withstand high-intensity battles. Zion Zhu said that the domestic world has already completed the upgrade of wireless charging energy sources, and each person's equipment is constantly being charged. She said that everyone has their own account number to pay, just like an ID card, as long as a person pays monthly. He can enjoy a comfortable life, and the consortium, based on each person's energy consumption, will charge a fee. Zion Zhu told the main character that in the inner world there are capacitor towers that generate energy, and cloud towers that transfer energy everywhere. Even in the wilderness, cloud towers stand scattered. However, vehicles in the wild are still chosen with a diesel engine, especially the military. The diesel engine has high energy, high speed and high torque, which is more suitable for military use in severe off-road conditions. But in fact, since smuggling is so common, getting out of the city is quite problematic. You need to go through customs set by the tax department and get a visa. The financial structures of the internal world are very strong. They have not only their own executive bodies, but also their own special services. However, of all the information available today, the most useful is that hard currency in the domestic world is also gold. The banks of the five largest consortia actually issue currency based on gold reserves. Sin Cheng smiled and thought that he finally knew how to make money in the inner world. He said that Li Tongyang called him. He asked how he could help. Zion Zhu said that the main thing is that because of her hands, she cannot cook for her today. Hanging her head sadly, she said that she wanted to ask him to take care of her. Li Tongyang's stomach growled and she pitifully asked him to make them something to eat because she was hungry. The main character said with a smile that it was not a problem. There was a knock on the door and someone asked if anyone was home. Looking out the window, Sin Cheng thought that this was an SUV of a mysterious organization. Putting on an apron, he told Li Tongyang to open the door for the guests and he would go to the kitchen to cook for her. She obeyed with a smile and thanked him. Li Tongyang opened the door. The guy with red hair greeted with a smile and said that his name was Lu Yuang. Extending his palm, he said that they had met before and he was from Kunlun. The main character, taking a carrot in his hand, frowned and thought that, it turns out, their organization is called Kunlun. Zian Zhu invited them to sit down and told her daughter to pour water for the guests. Lu Yuang asked what happened to her hands. She said her mechanical limbs had run out of power. Turning to the bespectacled man, Lu Yuang told him to take note. The man wrote something in a notepad. Sin Cheng thought that it seemed like they didn't know that mechanical limbs could run out of power, and their organization, just like Zion Zhu said, may have only been formed recently, so they don't know much about the inner world. Zion Zhu asked what they came for. Li Tongyang brought two glasses of water. Lu Yuang said that they wanted to ask something. He said that two people were here last night, and after one of them ran away from her house, he was attacked in their neighborhood and his shin was broken. 
He asked if she knew who did it. The main character opened his eyes tensely. Liu Yuing told her not to worry because they are not here to prosecute and just want to find out. Zion Zhu, Li Tongyang and the men in black suits sat opposite each other. Zion Zhu smiled awkwardly and said that she didn't know who did it, and maybe someone wanted to help. She asked what was going on and why they were investigating it. She thought that, in any case, they should not find Sin Cheng because he did it for her daughter. Liu Yuing asked not to misunderstand them, because they are not law enforcement agencies, so they do not want to do anything against this brave man. The man with glasses agreed and said that after the criminal's story, they discovered that this man chose the time to strike very cunningly. The moment for the ambush was very unusual, so they wanted to find him and see if he was a traveler. He said that they are checking all the strange events lately. Putting her index finger to her face, Li Tongyang said that after yesterday's incident, she and her mother were at home and didn't go out, so they don't know who did it. The main character thought that Li Tongyang's explanation actually added credibility, because most people subconsciously feel that children cannot lie. Looking down, he thought that Li Tongyang and he grew up in a very similar environment, the same parental quarrels, the same domestic violence, and his intuition tells him that he and she are very similar. He thought that under the calm appearance there was hidden the same rage raging in his heart. Li Tongyang asked them if this brave man or women had not helped them, and why they were looking for them. She asked if it was to arrest them and if they were bad people. Liu Yuing smiled good-naturedly and, leaning towards the table, said that she had misunderstood them. He said that they had no malicious intent, and since the Kunlun organization had just been created, they needed to find and accept a few talented like-minded people. He added that, in addition, in fact, in the inner world there are separate organizations and consortia that have discovered the existence of the outer world. Liu Yuing said that according to their data, 21 travelers died inexplicably and were tortured before they died, and more than 10 travelers made it clear that they were captured by inner world organizations. He said that he hoped that Zion Zhu will be vigilant and will not be detected by them. Standing up, he said that although these were covert operations, they were enough to remind them that exposure could be dangerous. Zion Zhu said that he understood. She thought that it turns out that revealing her personality in the inner world is so terrible. The man with glasses said that he Ziyak Zhao appeared again. Liu Yuan glanced at the phone screen. Li Tongyang asked who he is Ziyak Zhao. She said she thought he knew a lot. Liu Yuan asked if she knew him too. He said that they are also looking for this man now, but he is very good at hiding, and they have not yet found out who he is. He said that he was supposed to leave some clues, but now everything that concerns him has been erased. Liu Yuing said that they said too much, so they will leave them alone and leave with that. Zion Zhu said that she is now constrained in her movements and cannot carry them out. Liu Yuing said there is no need to bother. Noticing something, he turned his gaze down. He asked whose sneakers were at the door. Zion Zhu and Li Tongyang said that these are the sneakers of the family father. Apologizing, Liu Yuing pulled the door handle and walked out. Zion Zhu and Li Tongyang breathed a sigh of relief. Sin Cheng apologized for causing trouble for them. Zion Zhu told him not to say that, because they were the ones who got him into trouble, and if it weren't for them, he wouldn't have gotten involved in this matter. Li Tongyang winked and gave a thumbs up. The main character asked if there was food in the refrigerator and whether he needed to buy groceries. He asked if he should buy some ribs. Zion Zhu said that he and Li Tongyang are still growing, so they need to eat meat. She asked him to wait a while, that Li Tongyang gave him some money for groceries. Having put on his shoes and leaving their apartment, Sin Cheng returned to his apartment. Inside, he took off his sneakers, which the Kunlun people saw, and put on other shoes. Liu Yuan, sitting in the car, looked at the main character who appeared in the crowd. Sin Cheng walked calmly down the street. Seeing him, Liu Yuan and his colleague frowned. They looked at his shoes, which were brown. Liu Yuan lit a cigarette with a lighter. Exhaling tobacco smoke, he said that it was not him. The man with glasses said that he knew very well that there was someone else in the house, and it seemed that he was hiding from them. He asked why he didn't rush in and take a look. Liu Yuang said that Jen's boss explained that Kunlun was just founded and they should maintain good relations with travelers rather than use harsh methods. He said that they do not need to accept all travelers, because Kunlun does not need just anyone. He said that what they want to do in the future is to find those who are on the same path as them. Liu Yuang suggested waiting here, and if they didn't wait for him, it didn't matter. He said that a new era has begun, some are not destined to be ordinary, and maybe they don't need to look for them, they will appear on their own. The main character came to a large supermarket. Looking at the phone screen, he thought that Liu Yuing revealed a lot of information in a conversation with Zion Zhu. And since even Kunlun don't know who he is Zai Xiao, Kunlun did not recruit him. 
he thought that in modern society, where the internet is extremely developed, it is in principle impossible to erase one's own traces, and he Xiao had to master something beyond this time, technology beyond the understanding of people in the modern world or abilities. He Xiao called those who move world travelers. When moving to the inner world, the time of the outer world stops. When returning, the time of the inner world also stops. Domestic travelers are currently known to appear in 19 cities, and scattered travelers may appear in other regions, but the likelihood is very low. Isaac Sao suggested that those who want to become travelers should go to these 19 cities as soon as possible because the third batch of travelers will appear tonight. Since the inner world game is extremely difficult, he believes that all travelers can team up to explore the inner world on their own, which can increase the chances of survival. At the end Isaac Sao issued a very visible warning, telling travelers not to reveal their identity. The main character suspects that he should know that the travelers were exposed, and this led to serious consequences, so he specially reminded everyone. He thought that not all travelers are so smart, and in Prison 18 there is a hidden danger that Liu Deju will not be able to withstand interrogation at all. He thought that he did not expect that Hizai Xiao still considers that world to be a game but it is quite predictable that he is the most famous traveler, and this strategy will inevitably cause a great stir. Even with its own strength can speed up the process of gathering people who want to become travelers in 19 cities. Nang Jiangchen wrote to him that in the travel group, someone is selling the elixir of immortality developed by Zhu Fu, and the price is not very expensive if you buy it in bulk. He sent him the link. The main character asked how he knew whether the medicine was real or fake, and what relation Zhu Fu had on their part to the inner world. Nang Jiangchen said that he said that he was Zhu Fu, and he said that he did not go to Japan then, but moved with those boys and girls. Sin Cheng told him to just be happy. He thought that the inner world incident had actually given rise to quite a few scammers. Putting the phone in his pocket, he sighed and thought that sometimes he can't figure out if Nang is really Jiangchen is stupid or just pretending. There are 13 hours left on the countdown. The main character thought that the Kunlun people had finally left. On the table were delicious dishes of meat, vegetables, and tofu. Li Tongyang carefully fed her mother. Sin Cheng thought that to protect his daughter, Zian Zhu, whose character was initially soft, decided to become tougher. He thought that Li Tongyang was confident that after this transition, she would definitely be able to organize the best mechanical limbs for her mother, and he should only rely on himself. Zian Zhu asked the main character with a smile if his parents were very busy, because she rarely saw them. The main character said that they must be very busy. She said that she saw that his washing machine was broken. She told him not to be shy and to bring his dirty clothes for her to wash, since they knew him well. Zion Zhu added that he should not cook himself after school and just come to her to eat. Smiling brightly, she said that even if he didn't come, she still had to cook for Li Tongyang, so she would just add a couple of chopsticks. Sin Chen, looking down, agreed and thanked her. The full moon shone through the lattice windows. It was 23.59 on the clock. The main character, lying on the bed, thought that he was becoming more experienced in moving. He thought that if someone asked him now to choose where to live, in the inner or outer world, perhaps he would choose the inner one. The world, painted blue, again shattered into fragments. The guy, desperately banging on the cell door with his fists, demanded to be released. People shouted that they did not understand where they were. Someone asked if they knew who his father was. The main character smiled slightly. He thought, newcomers, welcome to prison 18. Inner world, noon. Sin Cheng sat up in bed. Looking at his hand, he opened his mouth. He exclaimed that this time the countdown lasts seven days. The countdown was 160 hours. Frowning, the main character thought why, what is the pattern here? He thought that it seemed like the travel rules still needed to be learned. The cell door opened noisily, and Sin Cheng walked out into the noisy corridor. The prisoners fearfully walked around him and bowed. The guy with the iron fist forced the other prisoner to bow. The main character looked down, nodding. Lu showed okay gesture with a smile. Sin Cheng thought, although Lu Guanyi may thus anger the other two forces, it cannot be said for sure that this will definitely cause conflict one day. He thought that he went to prison 18 to pave the way for him, and in order to be on foot in front of the night, you need to realize that you are a pawn in front of the night, because a pawn that has crossed the river cannot retreat. Success means life, failure means death, glory will be obtained at the cost of life. The main character thought that. Besides, Lee Shutton also didn't mind Lu's behavior, and he seemed to want to see what he was going to do. Seven new prisoners arrived today. When Lu caught the new prisoners, six of them seemed to be imprisoned for the second time and decided to accept their fate directly. Experienced prisoners know well that it is better to be patient, 
but if you resist, it will only get worse. However, when Lu caught the last new prisoner, he kept dodging, but this prisoner does not have mechanical limbs. Sin Cheng thought, with his normal physical fitness, how could he escape from these ferocious steel beasts to her? A guy with a shaved head, speaking with a strange accent, shouted not to touch him. Driven into a corner, he shouted not to mess with him and that they would die from one of his slaps. The prisoner asked if anyone understood what he was talking about. Another said that he roughly understood it, but not completely. The main character thought that this was a dialect of Chuang province, and he was a traveler. Frowning, he thought how this guy with a mouthful of Chuang words was able to get into prison 18. He thought that, according to the rules that he had previously deduced Sai Xiao, there are only 19 cities in the country where many travelers appear, and travelers from the same place also end up in the same place, so people from Low City end up in City 18. Sin Cheng wondered if there was a problem with the rule he generalized, or if the transition points were random. He thought there must be special circumstances. Li Shutton said to catch him and interrogate him thoroughly, as well as Huan Jixang and Liu Deju, who arrived earlier. Squinting, he said that he thought they might be from the same place. The main character thought that he was not a fool, and he could definitely notice something in these suspicious incidents. He thought that it was only a matter of time before people in the inner world learned about the outer world because there were too many travelers. He thought that it seemed like this dialect-speaking guy had made Lee Shutton connect all the strange things that had happened during this period of time. Eyes Lin Ziyak Sao turned yellow. The guy with the shaved head immediately lost consciousness. Sin Cheng thought that this time he no longer sat idly by, but directly let Lin Ziyak Sao act. Lin Ziyak Sao told Lu to move away and give it to him. Looking at the main character, he said, if their boss allows it. Prisoners whispered near Sin Cheng. One of them asked if Lu Guani himself is not the boss, and why is there another boss? Another said that from the very beginning Sin Cheng was not just a lucky guy who accidentally met Li Shutton, and he is a true god in his own right. The fat guy said his last name is Sin and he is the boss of Lu Guani. Lin Ziyak Sao said with a grin that he knows who his boss is and still dares to stop him. He said that, however, inflexibility is good. Sin Cheng nodded silently. The door opened with a creak, and Lin Ziyak Sao carried the guy away by the collar. The main character thought that Li Shutton and his people were free to come and go from prison. He thought, since they can move freely, why don't they leave here? The main character made his move on the board for Ziyanqi. Li Shutton stroked the stretching cat. Sin Cheng asked where Lin went Ziyak Sao. Li Shutton said that something unusual happened, and although he can't figure out what it is right now, it must be something beyond his imagination. He said that in the past, if strange people appeared around him one after another, he would think that someone might have made an elaborate plan and wanted to get something from him. But this time it seems, everything is different, and they have no plan and seem to have no brains. Folding his arms across his chest, the main character thought that he didn't have much time left. He thought that, not to mention the guy from Chuang province, only Liu Deju definitely couldn't resist Lin's interrogation Ziyak Zhao. After all, he still has the mysterious ability of the sleep demon, which can force people to unnoticed tell the truth during interrogation. He thought that exposure to the outside world was inevitable, and would happen soon. Go Huching greedily took a bite of meat. Yu Wang told him not to eat so much. He asked if the man had just been one of them. He said that he had heard that there were still some places in the wilderness where strange languages were spoken. Wiping his mouth, Go Huching said that he is not one of them, and this guy does not look like he came from the wilderness. He asked if he had ever met a man from the wilderness with such soft skin. Yuang agreed. Go Huching, laughing, slapped the main character on the back and said that Sin Cheng discovered their people, and he need not worry, because, it can be said, now he has come alone. He asked if he could get some meat for his three brothers too. Yi Wang asked if there was still a shortage of real meat in the wild. Go Hucheng asked how they would have time to raise livestock, since they face consortium raids almost every day. He added that, in addition, there were two more forbidden places where people almost died, and opportunities for survival rates are not as great as they think. Smiling, he said that if Sin Cheng will go there, he will have food. The main character, looking at it, thought that forbidden place is a new term that sounds like it has something to do with forbidden items. Go Huching asked why not go with him to the wasteland. He said that a person like him should have whatever he wants and can eat whatever he wants. Lee Shutton asked with a smile if he just wanted to drag him into the wild. He asked if he didn't understand that he was from the Sin family, and to be honest, isn't the opportunity to become Sin's shadow better than his wasteland? Slamming his fist on the table, Go Huching asked how this could be compared. He said it was not yet known whether he would become a shadow. 
He asked why take such a risk, because choosing a shadow is extremely dangerous, and why waste energy, because if he goes with him into the wasteland, he will have everything. Li Shutton asked what he had in his wasteland, and why others would come with him. Sin Cheng said that there are cakes he painted there. Go Ha Cheng looked at him blankly. It was 12.30, and the main character thought that Lin Ziyak Zhao will be back soon. He thought that he had to go through the most dangerous test in his life, and he did not have a single hidden trump card. Sitting with his eyes closed, he thought that he knew what he would have to face, but he could not hide. Opening my eyes, Sin Cheng frowned decisively and thought that there was nowhere to hide. The holographic clock showed 15.30. Interrogation room of the guy, sitting on a chair, was sleeping with his head thrown back. Lin Ziyak Zhao said that he scolded him all the time, and then abruptly broke out of the nightmare, and for half an hour he never repeated himself. Interrogation room B Liu Deju fell face down on the table. Lin Ziyak Zhao thought that the harvest here is very good, and this guy named Liu Deju said that he is a high school student who moved from a parallel universe, and in the city of Lo, where he lives, there are a lot of such travelers, but they all move randomly and no one knows where they will end up before they cross the border. He thought that one thing was bothering him, frowning. He thought that Liu Deju said that the reason he approached the boss was because someone said that if he found Li Shutton in Prison 18, he could gain a path to cultivation. He thought it was necessary to find out who was spreading such information. Lin Ziyak Sao stood up from the table and thought that although these movements are incomprehensible, in the whole story Liu Deju has no illogical inconsistencies from beginning to end. Leaning over the table, he said, last question. Liu Deju raised his head sharply. Lin Ziyak Xiao asked with a grin if he had ever heard a song called Farewell. Late dinner, Lin Ziyak Xiao returned to the table. The main character thought that Lin Ziyak Xiao is a smart and calculating person, but he does not have cunning. He thought that he had returned to the dining room, but kept silent about the results of the interrogation that had just been conducted. So the result was already extremely clear, and the results of the interrogation contained a secret that concerned someone from those present. Looking down, he thought, he must be that very person. Sin Cheng thought how Li Shutton would look at this, after all, he is a high-ranking person who controls everything, and such a person will not allow events to get out of control. He thought, no matter that he had earned his favor, it was not worth mentioning in front of such a big man. Li Shutton placed the iron bowl on the table. He ordered Lin Ziyak Zhao take their friend from the peaks to another place. Lin Ziyak Zhao bowed and obeyed. He approached Go Ha Cheng, and he said displeasedly that he would not go anywhere. Yi Wang snapped his fingers. The magic dome pushed him out of his place. Lin Ziyak Zhao said, if he still wants to stay here and find the forbidden item Ace-5, it is better for him not to approach. Go Ha Cheng said dissatisfiedly, he doesn't listen. The main character sat silently inside the dome. Li Shutton said that in recent days he ordered Lu Guani interrogate new prisoners. He asked if he was looking for them. Sin Cheng said yes. Li Shutton said that he is calmer than he imagined, and when he was his age, he was not as good as him. The main character said that this is not calm, it's just that panic is useless. Li Shutton said that although Lin Ziyak Zhao has not yet told him the results of the interrogation, he knows that it is definitely a big secret, and he has always been merciless when faced with what he cannot control. He asked with a gloomy face whether he had ever thought that he might not live to see tomorrow. The main character silently turned away, looking down. The prisoners walked among the tables and chatted cheerfully about something. Robo guards and drones monitored the situation in the prison. Machine guns flashed red from above. Looking up, Sin Cheng said he had thought about it. Leaning over the table and smiling slightly, he said that it had actually been very pleasant for him to communicate these few days, and, if he allowed, he hoped that they could get to know each other again. Li Shutton said that he beat him in Zianqi on the first day, so he is still in his debt. And if he has any request, he can say now. Sin Cheng asked if he could play the song goodbye again. Li Shutton asked if he would like to trade his debt for his life. The main character said that there is no need to exchange anything, and he cannot exchange his life. The dome began to crumble. Li Shutton agreed and said that he always liked his boldness. Yi Wang handed him the harmonica. Li Shutton told him to consider this song as a gift from him, and he could make his request at any time. He started playing a song on the harmonica. The sounds of a melodious song echoed through the prison like magic. Sin Cheng listened to the music, closed his eyes and lost himself in his memory. 
He thanked him. Midnight. There was silence in the prison corridors. The door to the protagonist's cell opened and someone entered. A man with a black bracelet on his hand put a black bag on his head. Three people left the prison cell. Sin Cheng, with a bag over his head, was thrown to the floor, and the one who did it dusted off his hands. The door of the room closed with a creak. The main character was lying on the floor in pitch darkness. Taking the black bag off his head, he slowly exhaled. He thought that he was in a closed dark space, did not know where he was, could not talk to people and was even deprived of the concept of time. He thought that loneliness and fear seemed to completely consume him. Sin Cheng thought that he was actually not afraid of loneliness at all, because he had been living alone since his parents divorced. Licking his lips, he thought that right now the lack of water would be his worst enemy. The countdown on his hand showed 146 hours, and he thought that although this countdown could not illuminate other places, it could at least help him count the time. Closing his eyes, the main character slowly exhaled. He mentally created a cinema hall around himself. He thought that, in any case, if he could not do anything, it would be better to watch a movie, and the theme of Prison Break was very appropriate, so Shawshank Redemption would be just right. There are 122 hours left on the countdown. Sin Cheng thought that he had mentally watched 8 movies and even slept, but it still couldn't stop the thirst and hunger. But it didn't matter. There are 98 hours left on the countdown. Noticing the kaleidoscope, the main character thought that the playback in his head had become intermittent. He thought that the body suddenly became cold and hot, and the skin became dry, and this was probably caused by the loss of water in the body. He thought that he could not sleep, and he was so hungry that he felt that his spirit was broken. There are 74 hours left on the countdown. It was deep night in the prison. Lu shouted at Lee Shutton to let him out of solitary confinement and asked where he locked his boss. He shouted that he wouldn't leave it like that and the Sin family wouldn't leave it like that either. Lin Xiao looked at the holographic clock, which showed midnight. He told his boss that four days had passed. Li Shutton remained silent. Lin Xiao leaned over and told him that Sin Cheng didn't say a word there for four days, and there was no sign of a nervous breakdown. Li Shutton said that he is an extremely smart person, because from the first day he slowed down his breathing rate to avoid rapid loss of water, and it is not unusual for him to survive for four days. Lin Xiao spread his hands and said that it is a rare person who can endure four days of silence, and he does not look like someone who is being tortured, more like he is just waiting, but he has not drunk water for four days, and if he does not drink water, he will die. He told him that he appreciated his talent and should be spared. Yi Wang said that the dark room might not do anything to him and he should be released. Li Shutton ordered to move on to water torture. Lin Xiaox Xiao pulled back in amazement and said that he was very dehydrated now and would subconsciously drink water when he saw it. He said that if this continues, he will die. Li Shutton, frowning seriously, said that life and death depend on his own choices, and he has never truly faced death by walking his path. Yi Wang poured water on the protagonist's face, which was covered with a white rag. Sin Cheng squeezed the wrist of his trembling hand behind his back. Yi Wang started pouring water on his face again, and he pursed his lips. Lin Xiaox Xiao thought that he did not expect that at this time Sin Cheng will still be able to maintain a clear mind. He thought that he knew what he was up against. He knew that he needed to muster his last will to fight for a chance to survive. The main character felt as if he was drowning in a bottomless pond. Hearing a voice calling him, he suddenly opened his eyes. Mother told little Sin Cheng that, besides his father, there is someone else who does not need them with him. The main character told her that he wants Tangalu. His mother pursed her lips tightly. Wang Fen smiled tiredly and sadly and said that she would buy him a Tangalu. She gave him Tangalu with a trembling hand, and Sin Cheng smiled happily. Wang Fen told him to eat Tangalu here while she went to the restroom. The little protagonist, sweating nervously, looked around worriedly. Evening came, and he stood with his eyes down on the floor. Tears appeared in his eyes. Tangalu was lying down, and he clutched his pants with his hands. Covering my eyes with my hands, Sin Cheng began to cry. The policeman held his hand, holding a black umbrella in his other hand. Wang Fen ran up to him and hugged him with tears on her face. They stood under the lantern, and the main character thought that it turned out that he had already been abandoned. He felt as if his lungs were wrapped in a thorny vine. Not far from him there was a large container of water on the floor. Wang Fen called the main character to follow her. Little Sin Cheng, holding one Tangalu in his hand, stood with his back to her. He said no. Wang Fen called him again with sad eyes. The main character said no again. With a determined frown, he sternly said no. Opening my eyes, Sin Cheng saw Lin Xiao. Lin Xiao slapped him on the back, 
and he coughed up water. Sitting on a chair, the main character wiped his face. Li Shutton asked why he didn't ask since he still owed him one request. Sin Chen, breathing heavily, said, Because you don't need a weak person. Li Shutton calmly looked at him with his yellow eyes. The main character in his eyes looked like a wolf. Li Shutton asked if he could forget what he did to him today. Sin Cheng said no, but he doesn't mind. Li Shutton smiled slightly. Turning around, he said with satisfaction that it was quite frank. He said that from tomorrow he will personally teach him. Turning around, he said that of all the shortest paths in the world, he would take him the longest. Lin Ziyak Xiao looked after him, smiling. He thought that he must be in a very good mood now. He thought that the legacy of the knights in his generation was almost broken, although he never mentioned it. He saw the boss choosing successors one by one, failing again and again, and he was nervous in his heart. He thought that this path was so difficult that he and Yi Wang could not complete it even if they wanted to. Sitting on a chair next to the main character, Lin Ziyak Zhao said that he admires him very much, and he doesn't know how he survived four days in a dark room. He said that he could only last 36 hours, and Yi Wang was slightly better than him, lasting 47 hours. Yi Wang asked, a little better. Lin Ziyak Zhao corrected himself dissatisfiedly and said, better. He asked if he was okay with that. Sin Cheng asked if they were also locked in a dark room. Lin Ziyak Zhao said that for ordinary people, this is a kind of torture, but for them, it is just a test that must be passed. He said that when the boss asked them to lock him in a dark room, he knew that he wanted to choose him, but if he failed, he didn't mind seeing him die, and the boss met life too often, and death, so his heart became hardened. He said that in this era it is impossible not to have a hard heart, so he cannot be blamed. Yi Wang told the main character to wipe himself off, and not many people can be so hard during water torture. Most people just end up stained with their own secretions in the process. On the tray were two bowls of rice and meat. Sin Cheng thought that after this Lin Ziyak Xiao, and Yi Wang even bet that he would eat first for dinner. And it seems that the fact that he was able to survive this water torture made not only Li Shutton happy, but also the two of them. Yi Wang said that a person who could survive the dark room and water torture is not stupid enough to eat the ribs first. What happened before in the outside world, no matter how painful it was, was nothing compared to what he had experienced over the past few days. His peers are still attending classes, falling in love, playing a game, but he has already begun an unknown life. Sin Cheng doesn't even know where he's going. Lin Ziyak Xiao asked that in fact, when he came, he didn't know that he was from the Sin family, so he asked the boss to play Ziyanki to get out of that situation, and he actually has nothing to do with the Sin family. He said that he had never lived in a Sin family, and he also had no sense of belonging. The main character said it was true. Lin Ziyak Xiao said with a smile that this is very good, and most likely the boss also thought about it, so he decided to accept it. Yu Wang said that he can be calm, because only he, Lin Ziyak Xiao and the boss know that he is from the outside world, and even Li Dongji they won't talk about it. He said that they would keep his secret. Sin Cheng thanked them and asked who Li Dongji was. Lin Ziyak Xiao raised his index finger and said with a smile that Li Dongji is from Hench. He said that Hench is an organization under the control of the knights, and the knights' capabilities are perhaps greater than he imagines. He said that he seemed to know nothing about the outside world and in the next few days he would help him catch up. Yi Wang said that Lu Guani is very loyal to him. He has suffered a lot for him these days and almost got into a fight with the boss. The main character thanked them for telling him about this. Lin Ziyak Xiao asked if he knew Lu Deju, Huan Jixang and Zhang Shen, who likes to swear. The main character said that he knows Lu Deju and Huan Jixang, but not very well, and they study together in high school. Lin Ziyak Xiao, with his eyes bulging, asked in shock that in the outside world he was an ordinary high school student. He said that he thought that in the outside world he must be someone cool, because the abilities and willpower that he showed are not something that an ordinary schoolboy could have. Sin Cheng said that the outside world is relatively calm, there is nothing supernatural, there are no mechanical limbs and gangs, everything is stable and peaceful. And in this era, even ordinary people are doing well and their lives are not in danger. Lin Ziyak Sao said he was jealous. The main character asked where the man speaking the strange language was locked up and if he could ask him something. Lin Ziyak Sao smiled, calling his thumb, and said that of course it was possible, because he was already one of them. He said that now in prison 18 he can do whatever he wants, and that man is in the interrogation room a few rooms away. Yi Wang held the guy by the shoulders, who was cursing angrily. The main character, putting a mask on his face, showed him the inscription, Quan Jai Lane. 
The guy reacted to the inscription and asked if he was from Earth. Sin Cheng said that he would ask him a few things. He asked if he was from Chuang province, why he moved here, and if he was in Lo City. The guy said that he came to the city of Lo on business, he didn't understand anything. As soon as he arrived, he immediately moved here. The main character asked what he was doing. The guy said that he resells tickets. He asked if he was from Lo City. Sin Cheng turned around and left silently. From the room came swearing in a strange language, and Lin Ziyak Xiao looked after him. He thought that this guy had just survived the dark room and water torture and could still continue to act so cautiously. They went out into the main prison room, full of robotic guards. The main character thought that his and his conclusions Ziyak Xiao were not mistaken. Jiang Shen appeared in City 18 because he came to the city of Lo, and wherever he moves, the life of a traveler in the inner world will continue there. Yu Wang told him that the day the traveler appeared, the first thing they did was not grab him, and this was also so that no one would associate him with him, so he did not have to worry about revealing his identity. He said Lin Ziyak Xiao told everyone that he had coveted Ace 5, which was guarded by the boss, so he was slightly punished. Sin Cheng said they thought everything through carefully. Liu, with a trembling voice, demanded to let his boss go. The main character asked if they locked him up for four days too. Lin Ziyak Xiao said that otherwise he would have made trouble with the boss again, and if it weren't for his commendable loyalty, the boss would have dealt with him long ago. He told him not to worry because he was given food and water for those four days. The main character asked if they found out what he did before. Lin Ziyak Xiao said that he used to be a thug from Heliangsh in the nursing home. Sin Cheng asked in amazement about the thug in the nursing home. According to Lin Ziyak Xiao, in the slums of the inner world there is no habit of caring for the elderly at all. Everyone over 60 is sent to a nursing home, and children spend their parents' pension. So-called thugs in nursing homes charge security fees and then pretend to be the grandsons of old people, scaring away other old people. It's a kind of profession to protect some old people from the bullying of other old people in a nursing home. Sin Cheng asked if he could see him. Lin Ziyak Xiao said yes. The protagonist wondered why. In such an important matter as the battle for the shadow, the Sin family sent a thug from the nursing home to help him. He thought it was strange. An exhausted Lu lay next to an untouched tray of food on the floor of the cell, demanding that his boss be released. Lin Ziyak Xiao walked to one of the CCTV cameras and waved his hand. Tearing the door open, Lu jumped up sharply. The main character entered his prison cell. Tears appeared on Lu's face. He asked if he was okay. Sin Cheng said he was fine. Lu asked why he had lost so much weight and whether he had been tortured. He said that when Yang will arrive in a few days, he will immediately tell him about it. The main character said that he shouldn't talk about it. He said that he heard that he was harassingly shutten. Lu asked if he didn't care about his ace 5, if it was because of him that he was tortured, and isn't that what Go Ha Cheng also came for, since nothing happened to him. He said that he believed that they only saw him as a candidate for the shadow position, so they thought that the Kin clan would not make a fuss about it. The main character suggested not to talk about this anymore, because this is his territory. Lu said dissatisfiedly that he was not happy with this, and tomorrow he would take a risk and fight Li Shutton. Sighing, Sin Cheng told him not to pretend. Smiling nervously, Lu said that he was not pretending. The main character looked at him intently. Lowering his head, Lu said that he could see right through him. He said that it's really just a way of survival for little people like them. Sin Cheng thought that Lu must understand that he wouldn't really care about him, so he was flaunting his devotion. And he must be thinking that if he doesn't do anything, then when will he get free, and he's nothing if he doesn't. Sooner or later he may end up overboard. He told him that he didn't have to flatter him and he understood what he had done in the last few days. He told him not to worry, because as long as he didn't betray him, he wouldn't trade him away like a chess piece. Lu exclaimed joyfully. The main character said that he had one thing that he needed to clarify. Closing his eyes, he told him, following him, to behave more discreetly and not be in everyone's sight as before. Lu said that he often heard Sin Yang said that he is very reserved, and this is true. He asked what he needed to improve. He told him just to tell him, and he would definitely change. Sin Cheng told him to first remove the gold jewelry from his mechanical arm and be more modest. He said that he would keep them for him for now, and he needed to keep it quiet. The main character put the gold jewelry in his pocket and told him to have a good rest. He thought that there was about 2 cubic centimeters of gold here, and based on the density of gold at room temperature, 19.23, there were more than 30 grams. He wondered what the price of gold was now in the outside world. Lin Ziyak Xiao looked at him and asked if there was anything else that needed to be dealt with. Sin Cheng, frowning and rubbing his chin, said that he had a plan to confirm something. There were 40 hours left on the countdown. The prisoners whispered behind the protagonist's back. 
One of them, pointing his thumb at him, said that he heard that this guy angered Lee Shutton, and he was locked in a dark room and tortured for several days. Another asked what it meant that he had now lost Lee Shutton's special treatment and became an ordinary person again. Lee Shutton and Lin Ziyak Sao sat across the table from each other, not far from them. The main character and Lu were sitting at the same table. Go Hucheng, placing the tray next to Sin Cheng asked why he had offended Lee Shutton so much that he was tortured like that. The main character asked if he was afraid of offending Lee Shutton by sitting here with him. Go Shutton asked why he should be afraid of Lee Shutton, since they, the Peaks, are not even afraid of consortiums. Sin Cheng asked why he was looking for him. Go Hucheng said that he is different from others, and others may respect the Kin clan behind him, but he is different, and he respects his abilities. He said that he was serious and he wanted to invite such an astute person like him to join them. Rising from the table, Sin Cheng said he wasn't interested. Suddenly he staggered. He grabbed the table with his hand. Turning around, he noticed two prisoners who were following him. The main character stopped, and the prisoners continued to approach him. He turned around sharply with a stern look. The prisoner twitched and froze in place in fear. They looked at each other with a serious look. The prisoners suddenly rushed to attack. Holding shivs in their hands, they quickly approached him, accelerated by mechanical prostheses on their legs. Suddenly the eyes of one of them rolled back. The main character calmly walked forward, and two guys fell to the floor. Eyes Lin Ziyak Sao glowed yellow. The prisoners around did not understand what was happening. Lu pulled out a tooth from the mouth of one of the attackers. Lu said that it was a capsule with poison. Closing my eyes, Sin Cheng thought that these two suicide bombers arrived with Jiang Shen from Chuang five days ago, plus the three suicide bombers who died before then. He thought that the plan had worked, and the target of these suicide bombers was not Li Shutton, but himself. Frowning, the main character wondered who was trying to kill him, and whether it was another candidate for the position of Shadow. Clenching his fists, he thought that he had no idea that the day's battle would be so dangerous. The shadow of the Sin Consortium, which specializes in dirty deeds, will naturally stop at nothing, and whoever dares to eliminate others is worthy of being a shadow. In this race of nine people in the dark, from the very beginning the question was not who would cope better with the task, but who would be more cruel and decisive. Lu asked him what to do now. Taking a look at Lin Ziyak Sao, the main character said that they would wait until they spoke. Sin Cheng was lying on the bed in his prison cell when his door creaked open. He went out into the corridor, and Lin Ziyak Sao waved his hand. Li Shutton asked the main character if he had any more questions. He said he could do something else before he started studying. Sin Cheng frowned and asked Lin Ziyak Sao, who wants to kill him. Li Shutton asked that they wanted to kill him. Lin Ziyak Sao said that he has not found out yet, and these two are very forgiving. Even in a nightmare, they are able to grit their teeth and give up. He said that these two actually committed a crime and no one organized it, so he couldn't find anything about it. And the mechanical limbs seemed to be specially replaced just so that no one would know where they were bought and manufactured. He told him not to worry and he would give him an answer in seven days. The main character thanked him. Lee Shutton said that, at least for the younger generation of the Kin family who are competing for the shadow position, danger is inevitable. He said that he must be mentally prepared for this. The main character, thinking, asked why everyone is fighting for the place of the shadow, and if it is such a mortal danger, is it worth it? Lee Shutton said with a slight smile that he didn't know from what generation. But the Kin family had established a rule that only someone who was a shadow could become the head of the family. The main character asked that only a shadow can become the head of a family. According to Lee Shutton, the shadow has existed in the Kin family since the last era of human civilization, and its former role is just cannon fodder that is thrown away when it is used up. After one powerful shadow became the head of the family, a rule was established that the head of the family must first become a shadow. On average, a shadow is chosen from a new generation approximately once every 10 years. When the head of the family retires, he chooses from among a dozen shadows the person he approves of most. Other shadow candidates will have to surrender their powers in exchange for protection from death in order to live a peaceful old age. The current model of nine people fighting for the position of shadow, who will become the head of the family, was established by the son of the shadow, who was the first to become the head of the family. It is said that this was because all the candidates he chose turned out to be worthless, and in the end he could only let his subordinates fight on their own. The one who won, naturally, was the best candidate for the post of head. However, about a thousand years passed, and the battle for the shadow gradually changed. At the beginning, the battle asked everyone to simply complete tasks, and the one who was more capable would win. 
Now the shadow becomes the one who can survive. Lee Shutton said that subsequently this practice of shadow battle continued, and perhaps the head of the Kin clan understands that if the clan is not fierce, then it will not be able to gain a foothold in this world. The main character frowned and said that now he needs to take care of his own safety, because each of the nine shadow candidates wants to get rid of the others. Lee Shutton said that to be honest, this time it was beyond his expectations, and he didn't expect that anyone would want to get rid of others from the beginning, because in the past it was not so fast, unless someone, or does not feel the threat emanating from him. Sin Cheng asked if it was because he had become close to him. Shaking his head, he said that the suicide bombers came for him even before they met. Lee Shutton told him not to think too much about it, because of course he would find out everything someday. The protagonist asked if he could withdraw from the battle for the shadow, and if there would be conflict with the Sin clan if he joined the knights. Lee Shutton said no, but he needs to try not to let others know that he joined the knights. He asked if he could see that he was locked here. He said that from now on he would teach him at night, and during the day everything would be the same. Looking at him with a cold gaze, Lee Shutton said that he did not advise him to withdraw from the shadow battle because he had not yet seen how great the power of the shadow was. Lee Shutton was sitting on the floor in the lotus position. He asked if there was anything else he wanted to ask. Sin Cheng said that he saw that the standard in the domestic world is still firearms. He asked if there was something else more powerful. Lee Shutton said there is, but not much. He said that there are special electromagnetic grenades to cut out mechanical limbs, and there are also special weapons mounted on mechanical limbs. But the military consortiums still prefer firearms, and the cartridges are mainly made of brass. The main character asked why the weapons here are almost the same as in the outer world, because the technologies of the inner world are very developed. Lee Shutton said that this is because it only takes one bullet to kill a person. He said that they had sorted out the little things, so they would get down to business. The main character asked about the longest path of all the shortest ones. Lee Shutton said yes. He told him to stretch out his right hand with a serious face. Sin Chen, sitting opposite him, extended his right hand. Grabbing his hand, Lee Shutton squeezed it. The main character clenched his teeth and thought that it was as if some very strong spiritual will control the rhythm of his breathing and even the speed of his blood flow. He felt small in front of the giant Lee Shutton, and they were surrounded by chains. Sin Cheng thought that the vein pinched by Lee Shutton seemed to be constrained. A flame appeared on Lee Shutton's neck and he slowly exhaled. The main character thought that everything that Lee Shutton was now showing was completely contrary to the laws of biology. Flames flowed through his veins instead of blood. Flames filled his lungs and he screamed in pain. Sin Cheng twitched in agony and Yi Wang told him to hold on. Lin Xiaok Sao told him to remember what he said, and only by going through painful experiences can one rise higher. The main character took a deep breath, there were flames on his skin. Lin Xiaok Sao shouted at him to remain conscious. He shouted that the pain that he had forgotten about would flash through his head, all the pain that was in his memory. And at that moment when he was about to fall apart, if he couldn't overcome it, no one would help him will be able to help. Sin Cheng remembered the first time he started living alone and the pain when he cut his finger with a kitchen knife. He thought that he still remembered even the feeling of cutting off fingerprints. He thought that during the torture, it seemed to him that poisonous seedlings were piercing cold roots into his lungs. The main character remembered the dark room, and the pain from dehydration and the first second of water torture collided with each other. He remembered the sunset on the day his mother left, and the suitcase behind her. These memories washed over him like a tide, and it was as if he had returned to the time when he was tortured with water. A bright light flashed in the pitch darkness. The voice called his name. The main character, standing in a white space, turned around. Wang Fin called him with a smile. Sin Cheng opened his eyes and mouth in shock. He began to slowly walk towards her. Their hands almost touched. The main character remembered how she abandoned him as a child, and her smile with her new family. He chuckled a little. Sin Cheng pulled his hand back and thought, No wonder Lee Shutton said that if you don't endure this, it is impossible to follow his path. Smiling, he said that he had come a long way alone, and he would walk the rest on his own. As he left, he thought that he no longer needed to feel sorry for himself and look back. The white space behind him was enveloped in flames. The main character thought that in the rest of his life he only had a path forward. Shrouded in flames, he thought that he had already experienced similar pain. And when it began to merge together, in his soul he already clearly knew what it meant to begin to fall apart. He thought that only the one who looked into the face of each of his pains would be able to step over the precipice of interrogation of the heart, break away from his past and move forward to the future. Lin Xiaoxiao said that maybe Sin Cheng, thanks to his memory, 
has never forgotten his pain, and his super memory is an outstanding talent, but it also causes him endless pain. Yu Wang said that he thinks he has believed in pain for a very long time, and what's more, he has already stepped over this chasm. The flames around the main character dissipated, and he exhaled. Li Shutin said it went more smoothly than he thought. Sin Cheng asked why this breathing technique. Li Shutin said that it is only an aid, and the breathing technique differs in breathing frequency. He said that he couldn't use it himself yet, but when he used it a few more times, he would remember the rhythm. Hearing a deep breath, Li Shutin opened his eyes. Sin Cheng was surrounded by flames, and Li Shutin said that he had completely forgotten that with his super memory, he could directly remember the breathing rhythm. He said that his teacher led him more than 40 times until he somehow memorized the breathing frequency and was able to repeat without mistakes. And since he didn't have to guide him, he would talk about the heritage of the knights, and they would talk about breathing techniques later. Lee Shutton said that the founder of the knightly organization discovered the secret of the gene lock. He came to the conclusion that when people pass eight tests on the edge of life and death, the gene lock will open on its own. In former times, only by passing these eight tests could one be considered a real knight. At that time, there were many knights who followed humanity through the era of cataclysm and created a new era of civilization with the surviving people. However, then there were fewer and fewer knights. The reason is that one of the stages of life and death should take place in the sea, but all seas became a forbidden place. Performing this test of life and death is simply deadly, and without passing one of the stages, the gene lock cannot be opened. However, through the continuous efforts of King Shen's predecessor and the subsequent generations of knights, it was discovered that, together with certain breathing techniques, they could open the gene lock every time they passed the test of life and death. When they completed the sixth stage, their strength had completely surpassed the older generation of knights. Li Shutton said that according to the classification of the levels of the inner world A, B, C, D, E, F, the sixth level is level of the main character asked what level he was. Yi Wang said that the boss is level 5. Sin Cheng asked what was so wonderful about this breathing technique that it could help open the gene lock. Li Shutton said that he should know about endorphins. He said that, like dopamine, it is a hormone that gives people happiness, but there are differences. Dopamine is produced when a person plays games, wins the lottery or from gambling, while endorphins give the joy and lightness after playing sports. Smiling, he said that all these are smart and beautiful words, but dopamine does not directly make people happy, and it is simply a neurotransmitter that is responsible for the transmission of serotonin, the good mood hormone. Lee Shutton said that, from a layman's point of view, dopamine does indeed give joy, but it does not give joy, but creates addiction. The main character asked about endorphins. Lee Shutton said that endorphins produce bitterness first, and then sweetness, and they bind to morphine receptors in the body and can relieve pain. But this is only their basic function. He said that King Shen conducted a very strict test and found that when the knights passed the test of life and death, endorphins were released in large quantities in the body. He said that he believed that dopamine is a poison that drowns people in vices, and endorphins are the key that opens the gene lock, so the knights had a new principle. Li Shutton and the main character said with one voice, after going through a painful experience, you will rise even higher. Sin Cheng asked what the relationship is between breathing technique and endorphins, and why it can be used to open the gene lock in advance. Li Shutton said that the breathing technique can make you feel pain, after which endorphins are instantly released which in itself is a way of controlling the body. He said that by using the breathing technique during physical training, one can achieve in three months what may take others years to achieve. So when one uses the breathing technique during a life and death test, the endorphins in the body are much higher than normal. The main character asked if it had other effects. Lee Shutton said that after he passed the first test of life and death, he would tell him about the rest of the effects. But now he had no need to know. Sin Cheng asked if endorphins couldn't be administered directly, and with this level of technology it should be possible to extract and administer endorphins without consequences. Li Shutton said that this is an era where even love can be faked with a phenylethyl amine chip. Closing his eyes, he said that he must understand that all actions relying on external forces do not work for them, and there were ancestors who tried to inject endorphins directly without using the breathing technique. But after passing the test of life and death, the gene the lock did not open. He said that they can understand the principle of endorphins, but they still cannot understand the principle of the gene lock. And to this day, the secret of the gene lock is still sacred and inviolable for the night. 
he said that they could only use the most labor-intensive method, strictly observing the order of earlier times. Lee Shutton grinned and said that this is why he said that this is the longest path of all the shortest paths in the world, and the only way to ascend to heaven is through cultivation full of pain. The main character, calmly looking back at him, said that he remembered this. He said that passing the seven tests of life and death is level 5, demigod. He asked what would happen if he passed all eight tests using the breathing technique. Li Shutton said that this question makes no sense. Sin Cheng objected because the seas of the outside world are not a forbidden place. Li Shutton opened his eyes and mouth in amazement. He said that they never had superhumans, so they could not have a forbidden place, and this means that he can pass all the tests in another world. Li Shutton thought that for a thousand years it was unknown how many knights were stuck in this bottleneck and could not break through further. He thought that now this young man had suddenly appeared who could fulfill the unfulfilled cherished desire of all his predecessors. The main character asked what forbidden places and forbidden objects are. Yi Wang said that the source of forbidden items and places is extraordinary. The main character asked about the extraordinary. Lin Ziyak Sao said that after a person suddenly dies, his abnormal and powerful blood will flow into the earth and nourish the creatures living in it ants, centipedes, scorpions, various insects, as well as plants growing there and even microbes. He said that then the creatures living at the place of his death would evolve, and the place of death itself would become forbidden. They say that the Kashima Consortium built many unmanned submarines to find a way to reach the new continent by sea, and then the bones of a giant whale were photographed at the bottom of the sea. The whale was photographed with a wide-angle lens, and it was so large that from a distance of over 300 meters, its head could not even be fully included in the lens. The Kashima Consortium suspects that this particular whale evolved beyond its species and died of old age, and its flesh and blood fed the entire ocean and turned the entire ocean into a forbidden place. Lin Ziyak Sao explained that forbidden items precipitate 10 to 100 years after the death of a superman. They are associated with either his superpower or his obsession. For example, in the wasteland near the city of 16, you can find a black steam locomotive of 12 cars cruising around the area. Sometimes it makes stops, and if you throw a 50-gram gold coin through the window into the tail car, you can become its passenger and go with it to the ends of the world. The tail car of this train is full of gold coins. Many clubs like to use it to smuggle goods, although it is not easy to find. If you try to steal his gold coins, he will ban the car, and the thief will be trapped until he dies. Therefore, the last car of this train is also full of bones. Of course, there are also some forbidden items that have nothing to do with the abilities of superhumans, and may even be mysterious creatures with endless life. If there is a way to contain it, it can serve well. If not, then it will become extremely dangerous. When faced with forbidden objects, people are like hunters with long swords. They understand that there are predatory animals in the forest, and they understand that these animals are different. Having accumulated relevant experience, they know which of them can be dealt with and which need to be avoided. However, now that there are more and more ferocious animals, special hunters are needed to fight them. This is how the Forbidden Inquisition appeared. They are enemies not only of animals, but also of those who raise them, and they restrain not only forbidden objects, but also superhumans from which they may appear, because they don't want there to be enough animals to one day destroy humanity. Li Shutton said that starting from today, Yi Wang will train him in fighting skills, training his physical strength and skills to complete the eight trials. He said that he envies him because he was born in the outside world, but that doesn't matter. He said that the important thing is that perhaps he can change this era. Getting up from his seat, Lee Shutton suggested starting. Straightening up, he said that he couldn't wait to see that day. Sin Cheng thought that even though he was in prison, he felt hope and freedom. Smiling, he thought that, compared to the sunny weather of the outside world, he actually liked it here better. Then, without warning, training began. Before training, Yi Wang even brought an amazing thermostatic food container full of chopped beef, and insistently told him to eat it. He was probably afraid that he wouldn't be able to bear the load. But what bothered the main character more was that when he used the breathing technique, he felt an inexplicable energy wandering through his body, and it didn't seem like it was helping the body in any way, but he seemed to be able to control it. He thought that he would have to ask Lee Shutton about this. There are 20 hours and 20 minutes left on the countdown. Early the next morning, Lin Ziyak Xiao asked what the progress was overnight. He said that the average person will not be able to handle high-intensity training in the beginning. He asked how long he lasted. Yi Wang replied, full load, trained from 11 to 3 a.m. Lin Ziyak Sao exclaimed in amazement that he had never trained like this before, but was able to do it until 3 a.m. 
He told Yi Wang that he was working him to death. Yi Wang said that there was nothing to be afraid of because he had a breathing technique. He let him eat a whole box of beef before training, and it was all used up in the process. He said that the boss specifically explained this, and he need not worry because he has a sense of proportion. Lin Ziyuk Sao said that even with the breathing technique, he would get tired. Yi Wang said that he seemed to be able to separate his body from his mind only pursuing the goal of training without paying attention to physical fatigue, and he had never seen this before. He said that if he had not been the traveler who moved here, perhaps with such willpower, he would have awakened and become a man long ago. Lin Ziyuk Xiao, rubbing his chin, said that this was good, because if he had awakened a long time ago, he would not have been an ordinary person and would not have been able to follow the boss's path. The main character walked nearby with a cheerful look. Lin Ziyuk Xiao asked Li Shutton if this breathing technique was so magical, and maybe he should try again tonight. He said that he felt that all was not lost for him. Li Shutton said that when he asked him to try again, he didn't dare, and now it's too late because he's too old. Lin Ziyuk Xiao said that he is only 27. Li Shutton stroked the cat and said that the longer a person lives, the more bitterness he has in his soul. And when he lives to be 27 years old, he experiences more and more suffering from this world. He said that using the breathing technique, he could not pass the heart interrogation at all. Smiling, he said that when they were young, they thought they were suffering a lot, but only when you become an adult do you understand that these are different types of suffering. Lee Shutton said that although he was the one who asked him to pretend that he was expelled, now he has no one to play Zayanki with. A voice announced that visitors had come to prisoners with numbers 10,101 and 2199. The voice asked them to follow mechanical guard number 3 to the visiting room. Sin Cheng thought that 10,101 was his number. He thought that he had been in the inner world for so long, and this was the first time someone had visited him. He even forgot that relatives visit him in prison. Lu told him that today is the day when Kai's relatives visit, and it must be Sin Yang. The steel doors in the long corridor slowly swung open. The main character and other prisoners walked along the corridor, lining up. The door swung open in front of them. Looking out the door, Sin Cheng's mouth opened. A girl with brown hair was sitting at the table in front of him. She was quite pretty and their eyes met. The girl pursed her lips in embarrassment. She abruptly looked away. The main character sat down at the table, and she looked at him, frowning. He thought that this was obviously not Sin Yang. He thought they couldn't reveal him as a traveler. The girl, straightening her hair and looking away, said that she was his fiancé, Kamishiro Soren. She looked at him with her green eyes. The main character silently pursed his lips. He thought why she had come, and this must be the first time they were seeing each other. The voice announced that the visiting time was over. Kamishiro Sorin looked up, rubbing her chin thoughtfully. She said something in Japanese with a smile. Sin Cheng asked blankly, what? Kamishiro Sorin said with a smile, nothing. A robot guard escorted him back to prison. Frowning, he thought about this inexplicable marriage contract. Kamishiro Sorin sat with her face in her palm, and the main character thought what was happening again. Sin Cheng walked through the prison premises. Lu asked him if Sin said Yang something. The main character said that it was not Sin Yang. He told him to continue with his plan. Lu asked him in a whisper if he really broke off his relationship with Li Shutton. Sin Cheng said yes, but they were not going to use outside help to complete the task. With his hands on his head, Lu agreed and said that he still had it. There are six hours left on the countdown. Under the starry sky was a landscape of a futuristic city glowing with blue light. A transparent blue whale swam in the air above the city. Bright fireworks shot into the sky. The sky was painted in the motley colors of fireworks, under which a blue whale swam across the sky. People on the ground raised their heads in amazement. A voice said, Pamilo Mobile, the best holographic communication capabilities. Zion hair was pulled back into a ponytail. She was wearing a yellow vest and had a leather bag slung over her shoulder. She walked down the street in the pouring rain, seeing the badge on her vest, one of the passers-by tensed in fear. Zion Zhu walked up to the purple neon sign. Two people appeared in front of her. They said hello. Zion Zhu asked how she could help them. The girl pointed to the container with the metal arms and said that the company was expressing its joy at the successful acquisition of shares and, in gratitude, had specifically ordered her to send her the latest mechanical arms from the Lee Consortium. She added that, moreover, an expert in installing mechanical limbs had also been sent for her, who would provide her with special training. Zion Zhu smiled awkwardly and thought that travelers in the outside world often talk about how terrible consortiums are, but she thinks they are very kind. She thought that they not only invested money in stocks, but also gave her mechanical limbs for free and even found her the best specialist to train her. 
as if they knew that she did not know how to install mechanical limbs. The girl said that two years ago she accidentally helped a middle-aged woman who was a member of the Lee Consortium, and she had been looking for her for two years and only recently found out about her, so these were all gifts from her. Zion Zhu noticed the mechanical arms, and the girl said that this is the most high-end product on the market at present, which not only contains built-in high-energy weapons, but also has an ultra-long battery life, and the neural synchronization speed can reach 97%. Zion Zhu thanked them. Raising her index finger, the girl added that this lady asked me to tell her that she is a very kind person, and she is very grateful to her. She said the scrambled eggs and tomatoes she made were delicious and the sweet and sour ribs were good too. She said that she must be a very good mother in the future. The girl asked her not to humiliate herself and not to be afraid of anything, because she deserves a better life. Zion Zhu opened her mouth in confusion. There are 30 minutes left on the countdown. The main character, covered in flames, trained hard, covered in sweat. Yu Wang thought that another half month of training and Sin Cheng will be able to start weight training and then they will see what he is truly capable of. He thought that for Sin Cheng time seems to be divided in half, because in half an hour he will return to the outside world. And then it is unknown how many days later he will return in the middle of the night to continue training. Li Shutton asked that the time was approaching when he would return to the outside world. Sin Cheng asked him if something had happened. Li Shutton said that he wants to see with his own eyes how he will cross the border of the worlds. Perhaps he will be able to discover some secret. The main character thought that it was necessary to admit that training, supplemented with breathing techniques, although it is not difficult, takes too much energy from the body and a little time has passed, and he is already very hungry. He asked Li Shutton if there was anything else. Li Shutton awkwardly looked away and asked if he could record some Zianqi parts for him and bring them here. Lick, Sin Cheng said, no problem. Yi Wang watched him eat the meat with gusto. The main character straightened up and took out gold jewelry from his pocket. Yi Wang said that he was just wondering where the gold from Lu's hand went guani. There are 10 seconds left on the countdown and Sin Cheng squeezed the gold in his hand. Li Shutton looked at him. The countdown has reached 5. When the countdown reached 1, the main character suddenly opened his eyes. The world again split into fragments. Sin Cheng spat out the flash drive from his mouth. Seeing 168 hours on the countdown, he said that it was 7 days again. He said it seemed like the time periods for traveling each way were getting longer and longer. The main character asked how long they would become in the future, and if it was possible that one day he would stay there for life and never return. He said that this time he successfully transferred the gold, which means that at least he has an advantage over others when moving between the inner and outer worlds. Frowning decisively, he clenched his fist and smiled. Sin Cheng, covered in flames, began to train on the floor of his room. The morning sun was shining through the window, and the main character, covered in sweat, was sitting on the floor in the lotus position. Looking at the phone screen, he got out of the shower. After drinking from a bottle of water, he remembered Kamishiro Soren. He entered the words she said into the Japanese to Chinese translator. The translator gave the result, it's good to sit like this in silence. This boy looks so beautiful in his silence. Raising an eyebrow, Sin Cheng asked what she meant by this and didn't Kamishiro's family also speak Chinese. Scratching his head, he asked if she was a traveler from the outside world, or if the Kamishiro family still preserved the Japanese heritage. He asked if she really was a traveler, how would he explain that she spoke Chinese so fluently? He said that perhaps few Japanese could speak Chinese so fluently. A notification about a new message from Nang appeared on the phone Jenchen. Bang Jenchen asked if he knows how cool Liu is Deju from parallel class. Sin Cheng, widening his eyes in amazement, asked what he was talking about. Nang Jenchen wrote to him to come to school soon. The main character came into a noisy school corridor. Bang Jenchen waved his hand and called him. Sin Cheng asked what happened. Bang Jenchen, holding the phone in his hand, told him to look at the hot search. There was a news headline on the screen. Jiang, a resident of Chuang province, came to Low City on business, accidentally became a world traveler, and ended up in Prison 18 in the inner world. According to Jiang, there is a traveler in Prison 18 who has become an important figure, and people obey him. He hopes to find this traveler, is ready to negotiate with him or even pay him, and hopes that he can convince him to release him from the detention center. The main character closed his eyes and thought that he needed to admit that Liu Deju and Jiang Shen were unlucky, and the life of other travelers is rich and colorful. They admire the city's holographic projections and walk around the cyber city, and these two ended up in prison. He thought that then it would be better not to move. Sin Cheng thought that when Liu Deju came back last time, because of his vanity, he admitted that he went to prison 18, 
and told everyone that he had already talked to Lee Shutton. And then when his classmates asked about it, Liu Deju did not answer, keeping an impenetrable expression on his face, meaning, confidential, don't ask. He thought that this was why many people thought that Liu Deju will soon receive Lee Shutton's legacy and become a superhuman. And now that the Jiang Shen incident has become known, Classmates who see this popular Weibo search should immediately think of Liu Deju. Liu Deju looked around the corner in fear and asked what happened. A crowd of schoolchildren ran up to him and one of them asked if he had seen the hot search on Weibo. He said that there was a man named Zhang Shen who said that he met him in Prison 18 and hoped that he could talk to Li Shutton and get him out of the detention center. Liu Deju thought that according to Zhang Shen, the mysterious boss came to him and asked him some questions in private, but this person is not him, which means that besides Jiang Shen and him, there is a third traveler in Prison 18, who is the real boss, and he is just a scapegoat. Grabbing his head, he thought that he would also beg this boss to let him out with Jiang Shen. Liu Deju said that actually the person Jiang Shen was talking about was not him, but someone else. The guy said that when he was previously asked if there were 18 other travelers in prison, he said that there were none. Grinning, the main character thought that he had attracted attention to himself quite well. At the entrance to the school there was a huge number of reporters with cameras. The teachers shouted and drove the students into the classroom. The guy climbed over the stone fence of the school. Upon landing, he loudly asked where the 2-4 high school class was. The girl pointed her finger at the building in fear. The guy in the corridor asked who Lee Baju is here. A schoolboy asked if he was talking about Liu Deju. The guy opened the door with a roar, and Liu Deju turned around. With his eyes bulging, the man told him that he knew that in Prison 18 he was very tough, and when he interrogated him, there was a Superman standing behind him, and he definitely occupied a high position. Liu Deju said in fear that he had found the wrong person. The men began to take Zhang Shen away, and he shouted with an accent that he should not be afraid, because he would not do anything to him. He was taken out of the class, and he shouted that he would give him money. Nang Zhengchen said that if he had not pulled him away so quickly, now maybe he could hear what they were talking about. After all, this is first-hand information about the inner world. He asked what if they could use it when they became travelers in the future. The main character, looking indifferently at the phone, said that he was not interested. Nang Zhengchen said that traveling to another world is very interesting, and if both of them go to the inner world, then they can become extraordinary people or install mechanical limbs and become superhumans. He said that they would create a union of those offended by their fathers. Noticing a programming book in his hands, Sin Cheng asked why he suddenly started reading. Bang Jiangchen smiled awkwardly and said that he just wanted to master the profession. He asked if they should get closer to Liu Deju. After all, if the relationship works out well, maybe they will receive advantages in the inner world. The main character, resting his face on his palm, said that he had no need for this because he was not a traveler. He thought that he knew that Liu Deju is fake, but others don't know it. He wondered, now that the number of travelers in the country was likely to increase, whether Liu's personality would attract Deju someone to the city of Lo. Sin Cheng wondered why no one from Kunlun had shown up yet, since such an important event had happened today. He thought maybe Li Shutton's legacy was not enough to attract attention. He realized that this was not the case and thought that there must be some problem here. 9.20 p.m. Liu Deju said goodbye to his friends on a bicycle. He was riding a bicycle down the street. Noticing a car chasing him, he thought it was bad. There were two guys in dark suits and dark glasses sitting in the car. The driver of the car sharply turned the steering wheel in his direction. Liu Deju fearfully noticed that the car was rapidly moving towards him. The car crashed into his bicycle and he fell onto the asphalt. The men got out of the car, and one of them ordered him to quickly pick it up and leave. Three long metal claws appeared from the hand of one of them. The other had a metal arm. Liu Deju, with tears on his face, frightenedly called for help. The bright light of the headlights sharply blinded the attackers. Large wheels squeaked along the asphalt. A large jeep crashed into a car at high speed. The collision sent the pursuing car flying to the side, jumping into the air. The car turned over and rolled on its side on the asphalt. The jeep driver honked his horn, and the men rushed to attack. Someone jumped from the bridge above their head. A man quickly appeared between the attackers, and they opened their eyes in fear. The man forcefully pressed them to the ground with his feet. Liu Deju looked in fear at the pieces of metal flying in the air. The man, standing with his back to him, asked if everything was okay. Turning, he said hello and extended his hand, saying that they were seeing each other for the first time. He said that he is the leader of Kunlun, Zhen Yuandun. 